how churches brainwash you through thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Do you does anybody know what that means? Thanksgiving? Do you know do you all know what that means? Because I never heard about it until this lady explained to me. And I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to actually what I wanted to do was to stand out today and actually talk about it, but no no problem. Uh, but I think you know, many people ask me about my book. Uh, in my book, Money Won't Make You Rich, I had mentioned there that the first thing you must do with your money is to put your tithes outside, your 10%, and send it to your church or send it to wherever you are paying your title. So people challenge me and say, but you are contradicting your teaching. I said, no, because when I wrote that book, I never even knew the corruption that is in the churches happened. I just wrote the book as, you know, when, the way I knew that we do with tight, you use it to take care of people, the needy and the poor. That's what I thought the, all the churches were doing. And you use it to meet your needs. I never knew those things were, uh, you know, they were doing all these kind of rubbish things that are happening. So, uh, this tight, so this Thanksgiving thing is so, Derogatory. It is so such a clear manipulation, such a brainwashing instrument that it is alarming. We are going to see. I'm going to show you some videos of this. This is, this is an invention in African churches. African church can invent anything you want. I think we are becoming church inventors of the world. We invent all kinds of things, but everything we are inventing is only to take your money from your pocket. Yes, please. <laughs> stop, stop. Do you people see what is happening? Can you see that box? Or oh, what's that? Is that bucket? 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 Or oh, basket? You see the basket there? Drum. Drum. I never knew these things happened though. Can you see what is happening here? This is one of the greatest brainwashing instruments that it could happen in the world. This thing, this thing we are seeing today, it is scandal. This one we are looking at now. Go, keep on going. You are looking at eh? this thing where you they look at like so this thing where you they look at so this thing are only trico this one now i'm robbery trico me i'm going to explain to you later this one is one of the greatest arm robbery only only trick that people in nigeria have come up with invention how will i not call this thing only this thing are only now Let's see it again. This is apart from title. <laughs> I, that's what I had. Maybe it's not true. But what I was told that the title no enter for this one. <laughs> that this is different and separate from title. And it's even different from offering. That's what I had. Uh, can you believe it? I said, ah. So there were Nigerian pastors fighting for title. They still have this one. This one, I go open people's eyes for this one. Oh. Because this one, that big old lady they for here. That big thief, thief strategy. Thief, oh, thief. Make you, make you stop them. Ah, uh ah. -huh. We know how that country practices this thing, though, apart from Africans. I'm robbers for church, for the house of God. God, Jesus is going to come and kick everybody out, though. The same thing Jesus did in those days. He's going to have to come down here and do it again for this Nigeria. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> say, 
wait, wait, wait. She did okay. Look what happened when he wrote here. They said this one goes directly to the pastor. She naked. Oh, it's not possible. No, it's not. Ah, this Nigerian church business, it don't pass anything. No. This thing has passed any any limit, any any common sense level. It, where have I been living for? Have I been living on this planet? <laughs> she naked. Can you imagine? Then someone also is writing here and said that this one goes directly to the pastor. Uh, and then one, one person is writing that this is what they call Baba, Baba Gokwewa. Ba, eh, no, I think it's Yoruba is writing. Baba Gokwewa. That means Baba, no, that means Father, take our glory or accept. Ah, okay. Now I got it. It means Father, accept our offering. It means father accept, right? Our offering. So you mean for daddy, I mean for God to accept your offering, you need to put money. For daddy or for God to accept your praise or your glory, thanksgiving, it has to be connected with money to the pastor. <laughs> Who are you bribing? This one serious. So I didn't know this is happening in Nigerian churches. So now wow. Father accept our thanks. Oh, that's what it means. Father accept our thanks. What thanks? You know, if you thank God for your mouth for in your own house. You don't go fifth thank God in your own house for your own mouth. You mean you mean you cannot thank God with your own mouth in your in your own house? Why can't you stay in your house and give thanks? That will not be accepted. You mean God won't accept that one? It is only the one that comes with money. Naim God so feel to feel accept. If you don't if you don't accompany the thing with cash, you mean God don't fit as set up. <laughs> so you are trying to tell me that the one that you are giving thanks at home, God doesn't care about that one. He's, he's not serious, he doesn't accept it. So the thanks that God will accept now is the one that you accompany with money. Mm -hmm. ah, these people are serious. So this is a I now see that this is a whole industry. Somebody has come up with this thing, it's a whole industry. Ah, Manipulators. Now, if, I said, I used to think that the most enterprising country in the world is America. But even this one is not in America. America has not do this one. This one is a pure Nigerian invention. I think Nigerians with invention, religious invention, they have passed America. Let's see the thing finish. Wow. They have two. Oh. Look, 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 look. Now two they have. Oh. <laughs> look, it's two. These two boxes they have there. Oh. Two what? Not boxes. Basket. These two baskets they have. Oh. I have not noticed. Wow. And they make it to be big enough the body, for the body to enter. I mean to fit. <laughs> I didn't see the thing though. Ah. Where have I been living? You tell me something. You mean in every church they have two like this? So the, some, some, some people are dancing to that side, some people are dancing to this side. Strategy don't come. This Africa don't do invention. Why? Well, and people are coming out though. So that you don't see food in your place. And so that the pastors and everybody will see who is bringing. These people are mathematicians. These people, I think they passed, me, no, not uh, Steve Jobs. I think Nigeria invention passed Steve Jobs. So even pass uh, the, what was the bill, what? The one that's delicious, Bill, uh, Bill Gates. I think our own pastor Bill Gates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. And they put good music. Oh. Where is the other one? And everybody is going with an envelope. Oh.
Now I understand why Nigeria is poor, but the churches are rich. The people are poor, but the churches are rich. So this is the, the, because they have manipulated, they have brainwashed the mind of the people so much that the only place they take money to is the church. Somebody is writing here that God loves a cheerful giver. So give all you've got and then live in poverty. <laughs> give all you've got and live in poverty. Ah, who came up with this idea? That person has to receive Nobel Prize winner. So you mean, but not all churches do this, all right? All churches will be doing this. African churches, Ghanaians too. Africans, I think all of them, not just Nigerians. So Nigerian, African, <laughs> who came up with the idea? I'm afraid it might be some papa there who has come up with this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's look at it. This is another one here. You always come with who is he going? Stop, stop, stop. Somebody is writing here. Is give, giving money for thanksgiving is recognizing that your blessings are from God. Of course. But why should you be doing all this show? Why is all this show necessary for it? If it's your past, you know. You know, the impression I'm having is that our people have not been taught that faith in God is a personal work. You know, faith in God is a personal work. Personal relationship with God. Nobody should know. Either you are giving you know, or you know they give. You know, nobody should even be aware. It's not anybody's business. Then what, what is surprising me is that, ah, look how many people are on the stage. Do they announce it or what? It really is an arranged thing. So how can you be talking about God's leading somebody? Because you can only be blessed when you know you are doing what God is leading you to do now. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Spirit of God has got to, it is, you only, should, should only be giving as the Holy Spirit is leading you. As you are feeling the prompt of your spirit, that Holy Spirit is leading you to do that. That's why you do it. You don't just go and do, go do, somebody come and do some announcement. That Sunday, next Sunday is Thanksgiving, or every Sunday is Thanksgiving. After you have given tithe and offering, ah, 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 ah. Make you have mercy on people now. These same people who have given tithe, they have given offering, and they are giving every Sunday, every Sunday, and now they have, ah, ah, shineke, not, ah, 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 ba, ah, ba, ah, ba, ah, 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 and people don't know that they are being manipulated, eh? Look, Mabusha, you tell me, how many years have you been in this church, in the embassy of God here? More than 10 years. More than 10 years. What is this? Do you see something like this here in our church here? Don't base the work of God on money. Everything is not money. Serve people. God will provide for his church. Serve people. Minister to people. people minister love to people. Give love to people. You don't need to manipulate people to be giving, 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 giving. That is manipulation. That is manipulation. Serve people like servants, like Jesus. Jesus never asked people to give him anything, or the disciples. Even when you give to the church, to the church, you are, you are led by the Spirit of God. You must be led by the Spirit of God. She has been in our church for over ten years. She know, so just for you not to be, don't believe my story. Don't believe my talk. Thank you so much, Babush. Let, what's this? Let's hear to the end. What, what's happening there? It's I 
offering, but with all this thanksgiving of the Lord, you will give them an answer in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the answer, Lord, shall not be an ordinary answer, because you are not an ordinary God. I pray that Heavenly Father, Lord, you will lift up the nation of Nigeria. And Father, Lord, that in the prosperity of the nation, the Lord, they too shall be seen to prosper in the name of Jesus. Let it be well with them. See the prayer the guys pray so that these people are giving so that the prosperity of God will come to the nation of Nigeria. It's like it's the opposite though. The more they collect people, they defraud. This is defrauding people. This is defrauding people. And the more they defraud people like that, the more the country become poorer. The country, Nigeria is not becoming richer because they are giving this money. Nigeria is becoming poorer rather. And their prayer, I don't be the answer. God is not, cannot be fooled or manipulated. This is robbery from people. You know I mean? People don't have at all. I mean, they don't have conscience to be treating people like this. Oh, 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 look what I'm Look what somebody wrote here. This is the list. See the list. They have tithe. Then they have offering as two. Number three, they have building projects. Number four, they have first fruit. You know, these people are. Are they, are they really serious? <laughs> That's just number four. You know they finish yet, though. Number five, they have stands giving the offering. Number six, you please, somebody have to get me that list. Let, let me go the right time. Number, number, uh, <laughs> number six, they have breakthrough seed. I think they have it on Facebook also. Somebody has put it there. You know, breakthrough seed. Then number seven, is it number seven now already? Number seven, they have prophet, prophet's offering. Number eight, they have uh, pastor's bad day. Number ten, ah, they have special project. Missionary bishop, no. <laughs> God's body. I mean, that's Russian. By God, oh. God Almighty. God Almighty. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Can churches in Nigeria be doing this to people? Nah, uh, I mean, take it easy. Take it easy now. What is waiting to happen? Every Holy Ghost service organized both in Nigeria and abroad. All Thanksgiving offerings belong to the pastor who convened the program. Ah, ah, wait in the days. Then they see a welfare offering. What is this? Why should they be taking advantage? I mean, this is midday robbery, my God. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. You mean nobody has seen this? This is midday robbery. This is midday robbery right there. You don't treat people like this. Don't just treat people of God as if they are not human beings. And if they don't have sense at all. What is this? This is horrible. Things have gone so bad like this in African churches. It's only about money these days. Or it's church business. Play, play to pay one, make I see. Somebody is saying in RCCG church, for pastor's bad day, I used to go levy it. Ooh. What do you mean? You, she used to be levied? $15,000 levy? What does that mean, levy? But $15,000, that's what? For the whole church has to pay? Or what? She said she was levied $15,000. She used to be levied $15,000. I don't understand. $15,000. No, maybe she made a mistake. Or uh, what do you mean, levy $15,000? That's a lot. Levy means you have to pay. Mm -hmm. So who has to pay fifteen thousand? Do you mean the church has to pay fifteen thousand dollars for pastor's bad day, or why do you say you have to? You used to go levy. What does that mean? Does that mean you you are the one make who make people to go? Everybody have to pay? No, but you what you wrote is fifteen thousand no dollars, maybe fifteen thousand naira. Maybe you made a mistake. Yes, yes, you are you are in the U.S. and it's fifteen thousand dollars. No, 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 that cannot be true. No, it cannot be true. You mean the whole church, collectively? Each? Ah, no. no okay, you mean all the members put together have to pay 15000 All the members of the church all together. If everybody pay one $1 each, it will come to 15000 eh? Is that what you mean? Or you mean each member has to pay 15000 for the pastor's birthday, then that pastor has to be arrested. Why should you even be levied? Why should you even be levied? 
Why should people, members, should levy because I have bad day? Because I was born, someone has to be levied. And because I'm a pastor, someone has to be levied. Mm -hmm. Wait till be this talk. What is happening here? Why is it that nobody is talking about this one? This is daylight robbery now. Okay, $15,000 from the members. They have to contribute it anything how they can. It's happening today. Members have to give the pastor 50,000 members. So, and other people, this is in Canada. And three other people have confirmed what you said, Unkechi, that in Canada, it is, that's what they are, the amount they have to pay. 15,000 for the pastor's birthday. All these redeemed churches. Ah, uh oh, -uh. God. What's happening here? Okay, let's see this one coming. I didn't get, maybe I see that thing again. Eh? <laughs> we have to say the prayer now from the beginning. Where did it happen? <laughs> you know. This one tough. This one passed me. <laughs> is it Thanksgiving also? That one? That one is also Thanksgiving offering. <sighs> so you have to dance to the front. I think that's the idea. The idea is that as you are bringing the money, you have to be dancing. Mm -hmm. What kind of what kind what kind of spirit has entered church in Nigeria? So this is not the only offering. Where is that list? There was a list that somebody gave just now. This is not the only one, though. That's what I understand. So, eh? apart from the Thanksgiving, they still have something else. Though. They have many. I think I counted about twelve. I think I counted about 12 things that, you know, that you have, I mean, 12 different offerings. Ah, ah, eh. So why are the people still calling these places churches? Let's see this one here. Stop, stop, stop. Is that the pastor? Yeah, if I were in this place, me too, I... Me too, I go dance like that. You look at the way he's so, the guy is so satisfied. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. It is Thanksgiving. And he knows how much he's going to count. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I understand. <laughs> These pastors, that's it. Now I understand why they say business, I mean, church is the most lucrative business now. Yes. This is the most lucrative business. Why, why should you go and work in some office mm -hmm. or in some field mm -hmm. when you can just start church and put on suits? <laughs> Look at the way that guy is dancing and so satisfied. Let's see him again, though. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Yeah, this is what I had, and I'm going to read this soon in my message. That when you give back to, you have to bring some money in the in the Thanksgiving something. I said, who said so? No, it's not possible. So if I give back now somebody's business, how come the church there? So if I give back now, what is the problem, pastor's problem? <laughs> that ain't do <laughs> You know, so all these people that give back, they have to come with their children and then come with money again. Mm -hmm. But don't these people have conscience? Because if you give back like this, you're having a lot of expenses. You know the kind of expenses a family that just has a child has? And do you know that when a, a woman gives birth, she doesn't even work? And some of them, they have to go on leave on for their home without pay. So some a family that is having added, what do you call it? Added uh, expense, expenses. Added, what do you call it? Added load. Added liability. Instead of the church, you know what we do in our church? We are the ones who put money in the envelope and give to every family. Yes. When you marry, the church will put something in the envelope and give you. When you have children, we'll put something in the envelope and give you.
If you are, especially if you are a worker and you are something, we are the one bringing gift. Even if the church would not do it, we would do it as a family ourselves. Baby dedication. Of course, baby dedication. You can have baby dedication, but why should you bring money? I never had though. Why should you be bringing money because you have baby dedication? If God leads you to do that, I've seen people do that in our church too. If God leads you to put money, attach money to it, that's your own God leading. But why should everybody do that? Especially if it's being required or compulsory. What is that? God doesn't treat anybody like that to compose three times giving because you have to do baby dedication. Did Jesus also did baby dedication? What he, he didn't, he, it's only God that he bring anything to church. Oh. Rather, it was to him people brought gifts. Tell me, who came up with all this manipulation to our people, eh? Who has done this to the church in Africa? Who did this? Can you go to America, to an American church, and say that you are doing baby dedication? Everybody had to bring an envelope. Who, where is that coming from? Unless you are an African. I think I must receive some calls here because I don't understand. Is it what is wrong with our people? So why is nobody has been speaking about this one? You knew about it? Ah, ah. Okay, play, play the thing. Let me see. Hello? Stop. That is why Africa is poor. Because these people, they don't have time to invest. They don't have money to invest. Everything is being brought to the church. I'm heartbroken. Yes, bring it. I'm devastated. I'm devastated. Hello. Yes. Who is calling uh, from where? Uh, DSA. Yes. Uh, doctor, I'm, I've been listening to you this program and yesterday's program. Yeah. I want to make a little comment. Yes, please. Uh, it is not a bad thing to give to church. Yes. When you are when you are in the church, by for example. The church will be like the do yes. pastor or anything. Yes. But now it is going extreme. Now the extreme we they talk it, about. Yeah, the extreme that you are talking about is very dangerous in the sense that even they have what they call God target. God what? God's target. God's target. No, target. I didn't hear about that one. No. <laughs> okay, that one I don't want to put it. But when is that doctor? <laughs> hey, they are all using the using all this brainwash to take money from people in the name of the Bible and in the name of the God. God. So my question is, can people serve God without the Bible or without the church? Yes, of course. Some one can serve God without the church building. But if you as soon as you are born again, you are already part of the church. So if you are born again, then, so, yes. Either you go to church building, you know, or you don't go to church building, you know, you are already part of the church. Uh -huh. So, you see, in the olden days, in the, in the book of Genesis, the Bible yes. says that Enoch walked with God. Yes. That's what go to church, that is what matters. There was no Bible. Yes. Moses, Abraham were all walking with God. There was no Bible. There was no church. It was not, okay, it, now. It was not only in the Old Testament, though. Even in the, the Bible was written only 300 years after Jesus had been having gone now. Uh -huh. So, Doctor, my question is now, now this program that you have started, I started joining you about three, four months ago. Yeah. Things that is coming out. Yeah. The religion in Africa now, Christianity in Africa, is dividing family. Okay. It's dividing people. It's dividing tribes. And also making people poor. I agree. So, what are we going to do now? Now this your program is going far. <laughs> For church, oh. It was in uh -huh. houses. People met in houses. In small uh -huh. groups. And they were studying to know God better. To develop uh -huh. their personal relationship with God. That's what they did, though. <laughs> so, so, doctor, this is very extreme. Ghana, Nigeria. For me, Ghana, Nigeria is what I do. <laughs> 
And all these pastors in Ghana, they are the same pastors in Nigeria. They have their branch in Ghana, they have their branch in Nigeria. Wow. Every Nigeria pastor or church has a branch in Ghana. Mm. And the Ghana also have a branch in Nigeria. So it is like a, a group. To conquer these people is not easy. Wow. They have formed a kind of empire huh. with politicians, with chiefs, with, with opinion leaders. <laughs> it's, it's not easy. So, Doctor, this is what I can say. It's like the mafia, but it's like the mafia then. If what you are saying is true, then it has become mafia. It's like the mafia in Italia in Sicily. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like the mafia in Italia, the Italian mafia in Sicily. It's like that. They are with the politician, with the police, with the army, with the land guards, also people who sell land. Chiefs, queen mothers. <laughs> wow. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> This thing passed me. Oh. This one passed me. Oh. Bring watch our people to the end. Finish. Bring watch everybody rubbish. Let's see the one we were looking at before. Or oh, is there a caller? If we have a caller, we can hear the caller. And they enjoy this dance. This was a serious. <laughs> this was a serious dance we are going on. <laughs> So this, I think this is why people are going to church, just to gyrate. Mm -hmm. And why they are gyrating, they don't even notice that they are brainwashing them. Hello? Hey, Krista. Hey, who is calling? Hello? No, oh, he's cut off. <laughs> so I think it's mainly these people are going to church for gyrating now. Because it's like, you know, people are just forgetting themselves and they are bringing me brainwashed but that way, they don't even know. Yeah, how are you, dear sir? Very fine. Great. I would like to just conquer with the previous caller. I think uh, it's very dangerous indeed. Yes. Because, because, because what is happening in Nigeria has been exported across Africa. Bad news. <laughs> Bad news. Uh, I'm calling from Zambia. Uh, it's uh, the same thing. What is happening in Nigeria? We are copying exactly what is happening in Lagos there. Wow. So I think the, the previous caller was correct that uh, these people, they have built empires. Wow. And the DSA has to duplicate himself. Wow. So we have to really build a force. Okay. Because I think the damage is too much. Wow. The damage is too much. Wow. So the same, yeah, the same thing is happening in Zambia? It's happening here. Oh. Our, say, our, our first child, we had, to, we had to take, we had to carry a package in our hands as well for child education. And you had to give money to church? Yes. Why? They say you can't go there empty-handed. How would you go and see the prophet empty-handed? <laughs> oh, oh, what? My God. You see? So I, I think this revolution is an awareness. It's this awareness that is taking place. Because I stopped going to uh, the, the, the four walls now. I stopped going there. Yes. Yeah, I, was, I, started, I started joining you at, at DSA. I joined in, in, in October. October. Yes. That's when I started yeah, uh, following, following the programs and listening to the audience. Uh, we stopped going to, to, to the four walls now. My God, my God, my God. This is so sad yeah. what is happening here. You know, it's so sad. It's so sad. It's so sad because they, they are really mafias. They know they know how to play the game. Huh. They are they are masters at the game, you know. And they've done they've duplicated themselves. Wow. So 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 it's it's it's, it's, it's gonna be a challenge, but so, hey, we so, shall hold on. Someone, Let's fight so, this battle. Someone is asking you that in Zambia, what church were you going to in Zambia? <laughs> was it was it RC, is it RCCG church? No, uh, Witness Chapel. Wow, they do the same thing there. Eh? The, the same thing, wow. and I would see, but uh, but I'm like, but I, I, I can see this is manipulation. <laughs> see, this wow. is manipulation. But uh, you see, uh, the the way you are coming up now, we are we are learning more. You know, we are seeing more. The, okay. Oh, this is what is happening. This is what really is happening. Because wow. they are masters. They, they are master, master manipulators. 
I think they have, I think it's the spirit of mammon, the spirit of the world yes. that hijacked the church. Exactly, exactly. Thank you, sir. Thank so, you so much. Th thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Oh, this is uh, Nero from, from New York. Oh, Pastor Nero! Oh, well, <laughs> nice to hear what was again. Yes, sir. You just opened a Pandora's box, sir. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, this one, will, this one you will see a lot of reaction because this is big business wow. in the churches today. Oh. Tell me about this. This is the day, this is the time of the month where majority of the churches have a lot of visitors. What do you mean? Where you have you have bad day, you have baby dedication, you have um, you have those that travel and came back, and so this is a time when it's expected for everyone to come to church, bring their best clothes, and dance and give money, <laughs> and that money goes straight to the pastor. No. So, so this teaching, <laughs> it goes straight to the pastor, and the pastor, and once it's collected, it goes straight to the pastor. Are you aware of it? I'm aware of it because I grew up in church. My God. But so what? This, this but was... somebody gave me a list now, Pastor. Somebody gave me a list now about twelve, you know, different subjects or areas of di different. Kinds uh, there's, of there's, there's more. There's more. There's more. That is one. If the geo is around, you collect for geo. If the um, um, whoever <laughs> this special visitor comes, you collect for them too. So it's, it's, it's a lot of lists. Everyone comes up with their own lists. Mm -hmm. And everyone is copying each other. And whatever new thing they see out there, they now bring it into their church. Ooh. Yeah. But this, they mean they like robbery. Yeah. We're just taking from people, and people don't even have, but we're taking from them. People don't even so have. People are becoming smart now. People are becoming smart now. They're giving one one dollar. <laughs> Because in some churches, this goes for hours. Wow. You'll be in church for at least three, four hours doing this Thanksgiving. My God. But some, somebody said, even if your son goes to university and get admit, gets admitted. Yeah, that's, that's another Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> what about when he finishes? No, you bring, you do Thanksgiving and you, you give money to church and then also you bring food and drink to give everybody. Waiting they have, I'm so, my God. So it's not just about giving money. It's not just money, it's more than, uh, you, have to, you have to show that uh, you have arrived. Somebody, so, so somebody you, bring, is... you bring rice, you bring <laughs> drinks, and you give to everyone. Because you're, <laughs> because you're saying... <laughs> Is that tradition or, do they say it's scripture or it's just tradition? They, they say it's scriptural, they, they, they say it's scriptural, but it's just, it has become something else now. <laughs> okay, um, so, it, because what I saw today is when somebody gives birth, somebody was bringing his baby here now. So, but, yes. so it means any occasion, anything that happens to you, you have to bring money to church. Any occasion, if you get married, the same thing. If you get married, no, no, you yes. don't mean it. No, you mean when they are you blessing married, you? When do you get anything to Anything that happens, you must do something. Okay. Yeah. So, so no, what, um, somebody is explaining to me now that what happens is not during the wedding itself. That it is... It is no, Sunday. not during the wedding. It's after, you know, the wedding on Saturday and then the Sunday. After the wedding, they come to church. And you have to bring some offering again. It's expected that you bring offering. So it's not the church that is giving them money. No, no, no. In some cases, church do give money, but a lot of times the money that they give, they end up having to give back. So is it expected? What about if I don't if I do wedding and I don't come and do any Thanksgiving? No, it's not. It's not. It's it's expected, but it's not. In some, I mean, in some churches, just just our church is not forced. It's not enforced on them. But it's expected. So that expectation is already on you. Ooh. Yeah. But somebody even said after burial, you have to also do Thanksgiving. Yes, yes, you do. Yeah, yeah, you do. No, it's not possible. You mean if your daddy dies so now? If you go to, so if you go to Nigeria, do your burial, once you come back, you do Thanksgiving. No, it's not possible. But yeah. you just spent all the money in the burial now. <laughs> 
No, this is a massive. So this is really, this is really, really, really big. I think this one needs to be really pushed. Thank you so much, Pastor. Is. Thank you so much, Pastor. Yes, sir. Thanks so much. Yeah. Ah, ah. This thing tough. Oh. This thing tough. Oh. And people don't even think about it, eh? Thanksgiving to what everything. People have been held captive, so. So why are they fighting about the tight one then? The tight is just one thing. But, so they have so many other ideas, so many other areas like this, and they are talking about tight. This is an organized crime. Oh. This is an organized crime. If they should organize to do the gospel like this, to preach, yes, I think we have a caller. Hello? Hello? Yes, who is calling from where? Okay, this is, this is Madison from... Uh... Uh, Michigan in the USA. Yeah, Madison, please so help me out. Oh. There is something I'm learning today. Oh. <laughs> yes, um, let me just say, uh, I have three co uh, quick contributions. The first one is as to the dedication. We're talking about dedication. Now, this is the scripture that they use. They use uh, Luke chapter 2 from 22 to 24 about Jesus' presentation in the temple. Yes. It says that every male who opens them shall be called holy unto the Lord yes. and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, yes. a pair of turtle dogs or two young pigeons. Yes. So that is what they okay. use. May I to didn't just... say any pigeon today? Oh. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Because, all the... because Jesus all the... has become our sacrifice. Exactly. So that is, but that is the scripture that they used to uh, justify that. Then uh, the other contribution is that about the Thanksgiving, I noticed that, uh, at least I come from originally from Cameroon. So back in Cameroon, uh, typically the Thanksgiving is not very symmetric for the coastal circles. And of course, they now do, they have the monthly Thanksgiving, then they have the annual Thanksgiving again, which is just a morning uh, 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 a race, a money racing avenue, no, and then they have the pastor. But why should we have monthly? What do you mean monthly? That could be twice times a year. Exactly, and then they have a grand one at the end of the year. In so addition, to if you already have ones a year, why should you be having every month again? What is happening? That is again, it's a money making scheme because that's a whole idea. <laughs> I, 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 that's what I would think because that is what it, it seems to me. Um, but one other thing, and then there is also special Thanksgiving where you now decide that maybe something happens spectacular or whatever, and you offer a special <laughs> Thanksgiving for that kind of thing. Um, so now, something it means you have to be hiding whatever happens in your life. Otherwise, they'll be expecting from you to come and give something. Exactly. It's possible. It's possible that somebody will say that, well, hey, that, what you just shared with me, you need some Thanksgiving. And the person might <laughs> So you have to come and make up. And when they say Thanksgiving, it's not because you're just going to say thank you. It means that you have to come with something. Now, but then there is something unique for the case of Cameroon, though, that maybe I don't know if it happens in other African countries. Now, back in Cameroon, you know, remember a couple months ago, we were talking about syncretism in the church? Yes, sir. Uh, and this is like that. In Cameroon, we have, when somebody dies, we have what we call death celebration. That means... They, you know, they die and they are buried, but maybe one year afterwards, they come and do some kind of libation to the ancestors and things like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's common in other African countries, but we used to have that in, back in Cameroon. And then when people began to give their lives to Christ, there was now they, they were caught in between now. Do you come back home and do that kind of thing you know, to the dead? You know, basically sacrifice to the dead or poor libation to the dead. Huh. And so... Oh, a new form of thanksgiving came up, which was to a cover up for it is like to go back to the village and do the same rites, but now do it in the name of Christ or make it more religious. So they call it thanksgiving. Wow. In this case, now instead of you know, when you go now to the village, you know, and to throw libation and all of that, then you organize the so called thanksgiving back in the church and then you give some money, which was kind of like a cover up for the what they used to call death celebration. My god. And, and then they but then so I don't know if that is practiced in other yes, countries. Yes, everywhere. It's in Nigeria, it's in my village, it's everywhere. Oh, good. So, so you see, again, this is the aspect of syncretism where we have a culture that 
is is not godly and then we look for a a a, a christian version quote christian version <laughs> of the same thing and then we bring it now to the to the church and then see the people are already used to that they just find it now it, it makes it even more welcoming because then you 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 make you you know basically you're helping them do what they would have done you know in the non christian circle in the non church circle in the church so they welcome it and then it just fits into the syncretism and it fits into the the narrative that they have to pay homage to the dead so they pay homage to the dead through a what so called thanksgiving that replaces now the the death celebration that others might have looked at it as paganistic so they are christianizing a paganistic practice through the thanksgiving ceremony so that is the contribution i wanted to give uh you know for for today but all of this again is a money making scheme come to think about it because but, but, yeah, um, but the question i have for you mr Bradley, is can i just yeah. come and give that for example in our church we also have child dedication and people yes. come and give, give thanks but they don't have to bring money with it exactly i i, I totally agree with you that you know they have turned each one of these things, which are good, good things in and, of, in and of themselves, good practices that people have to freely, out of their free will and out of their joy and celebration, do that. But they have turned all of this and made it, built it up into a, you know, into a greed system that uh, ob obliges people and forces people to do this. And then, and then, and then because the people don't necessarily think twice on what they are doing, it just don't but why, I, I I would agree. I don't with understand that. why should really? money be attached. I don't so Thanksgiving is it only ah when does that why does Thanksgiving be connected to money? I don't understand. Exactly. That is that is the thing. But I think that the, the scripture I just gave you is one of the things that they use <laughs> as a justification. Why, why, why? Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. Ah. <laughs> that wow. Now, wow, eh? What is what has what has happened to us as a people? Now I begin to agree with Maxwell that religion is the opium of the people. Religion, eh? These people have just used the religious has become a curse on Nigerians and Africans. Hello, I think we have a caller. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Who is calling? Uh, my name is Peter. My name is Peter. I'm calling from Belgium. Yes, sir, Peter. Yeah, I I called yesterday too. I have just listened to the message for today oh. about the uh, um, about uh, what is going on in the church. Yes. Uh, when you, when you, for a, a child dedication, I have experienced it as well. They said it's not only for child. Though. They said even if your mom, your mama died, you could go pay money too for church. Uh, but that I have not experienced, but I have experienced uh, the one uh, where you do a dedication, the first money that we collect. Uh, the first, my first experience was in uh, 2014 when I gave birth to my child. Hello. So you paid? Yeah, when I, when I, when I did the dedication, they would share envelopes to your, all the invitees that came with you. Uh, Why? Hopefully you think that he uh, said they will give it to the they will give it to you back later maybe for to 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 help for the child and then the other one is for the church wow. and the second one they will now say you have to sow a seed for the child and the people that come from another another church they don't understand they will give all they have maybe the envelope they have for the child just to maybe the gift they will give everything that one is the first they said that is the first for the church so the first time i argue it i said it's not right and people that came they said they have already given what they brought to the child they have already given it to the church because the church we gave us they will give us a bus we will stand in the front of the church and everybody that comes with you, they will give them the envelope. Everybody will put their things, their money inside, and that will just go to the church. Are you we don't see? even know how. We don't you even see? know how much it is. And the church will not return the money to you. No, 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 no. They said that is for the church. Then they will not ask again for another one to say. And everybody, any new person or that don't understand, that don't remember the church, will now go surprised and say, "Ah, I thought." 
because the way they do it, it is when everybody is dancing to celebrate for the for the let me uh, the dedication, and then they will not share the envelope, and everybody thought everybody will thought that they are giving it to the baby. Then at the end of the day, they will not take it and said, okay, they will take that one apart. They will not send another one to sow a seed for the for the new baby. I've experienced it, so is the truth. It's what is going on in the church today. No, but that, that, is, receive, oh, that is robbery now, bro. That okay. is, that is sir, robbery. Before I receive, sir, before I receive this call, before I receive your call now when you called me, I my uncle is a pastor in Nigeria. My mother immediate younger brother. He's a, he's a, he's a man. He's a man of 50-something, almost 60 years old. He just sent me a message now that I should not join to castigate the church. He just sent me if I can forward this message to you now. I will forward it to you. His name is Pastor David Osarobo. He's an educated man. He's a graduate. He's graduated from University of Osuka, Nigeria, Enugu State. He's a master holder. And he, he said, just sent he, me, he, he, he said because I'll be forwarding this message to him ever since. And he just replied me now, not too long ago. He just replied me. And he said, I should not join to castigate the church. So the he TV like, is castigating the church? Yeah, and he, he owns a church. He has a church. He has one church. He has a church that he's pastoring. He's my uncle. He's my mother. He's my uncle. He just sent me a message. I'm so pissed off because these people, they, don't, they, they are destroying Nigeria when you speak. I will reply him when I finish. I will reply him for him to... He's an educated person. He has, he has been a teacher in a, in a secondary school. He, I have worked with him when I was in Nigeria. He had a company before. I, I, he, he's, he's an educated person. Even he had the capacity to lecture people for this the doom of the, the calamity that putting people in. I will reply him now when I finish. I will reply him the way we, we, we maybe we call my mother and complain to my mother. Bro, they don't, call, they don't, they don't, these people don't kill that church. They don't kill that country. Oh. No, they, 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 they say, you know, we need to do something. I, I, I was, this afternoon, I was, I met a friend of mine. He's from the East. He's a Igbo man from Nigeria. And he's a very, uh, I like him for his character. So I was sharing your message with him. I told him he should go and go, go and go to YouTube because I said I want to partner with him because he has some character that I know that I admire. Although he's not a pastor, he's somebody that is Christian, thinks that is not good. I mean, it's like, it's like activist here in Belgium. So he's a very good friend. He's an elderly man. I, was, I took my time, about 30 minutes, we were standing in front of a, a, a park and I was just discussing. I said, this is, it. This is what is going on now. That, we should all pull hand and see how we can, our voice will be heard. Even this morning again, in another city, I was talking with a friend. I stopped the conversation. I brought in your, this uh, innovation because as we sending them, all these messages and put it to them and everything, they should listen. And you understand? He was telling me, like, you know, all these things are seen in the Bible. All these people can defend it. I said, no. When it's time for everything, there is time for everything. If you know that he's wrong, you just accept and say, play your own role. Play your role and see how you can play your part. Uh, you can you can support because God has raised a man that is not. It's not that he's suffering. It's not that he, he don't have. He, he, he's looking for what to eat or he's looking for way. It's just because God wants to use him. I need people like us. He need people like you, like me, like that. That understand the the the, the, the his mission. That understand what he wants to do. We are suffering. We are suffering in Nigeria. Today, I know how much I've sent to Nigeria for people, different people. I've sent close to 500 million today, distribute to people. If, for example, our country is good, what you, you I mean, you will think, eh, but not, not that much. Not yeah, that much people. Yeah. I just received a call now. Again, to help, uh, somebody just called me now, my, 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 my niece, my niece, he called me and I said, okay, tomorrow I will see what I can do. But I don't have much like that, but I have to help. But we have a country that, this is what they go to church. They have, they have been saying they will be blessed, they will receive miracles, God will open from January to December, we are almost the end of December, some of them are still wallowing, and today some of them are going to church, they will go and sow a seed. And but the money, ask you to but give. all the calls they are receiving, they will later go and give testimony now for church. And say that, that the prophets yeah. of the past are coming to pass. My uncle sent me yes. money. That somebody sent me money. Somebody sent me twenty thousand, twenty thousand. Which one? Who has sold the game? The one sold a seed from that one, as well. But they don't know that you. They suffer for the money where you they give them. Yes, I'm working. And this country, they say they don't know God. This country, the Belgium that I'm living, when a child, when you are, my a woman is pregnant for seven months. <laughs> 
The country will pay a thousand something euro for the child, for the mother to support the child. And when the child is born after one month, the child will be receiving receiving more support, like child support. And, and they still give you everything. They have, they have everything that they will support you in every way. They will support you in every way. Our country where we come from, we are talking about miracles. We see these people, they don't know God. We are not deceiving ourselves. And they say we need to do something because people, I, I know I'm just the beginning. I, I'm feeling pain where people, people don't understand. People don't understand what is going on. My uncle, my uncle just called me. He said, no, so he sent me a message. If I can forward it to you, I, I should I forward it to you. How? He, just, he just said, I should, I should stop. I should stop following people to condemn the church. I want to reply him when I finish. I want to reply him very hard. <laughs> Thank I you, sir. for a word that I want to use to reply him for him to wake up. <laughs> Thank because you, Because when he preach the good thing, when he preach the, when he preach the good thing and do the good thing, people will still come to church. People will be even blessed more than what it is. Yes. Thank but you. They see it in a very different way. They Thank see it in a very different way. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Wow. This has now become a robbery system, oh. Organized robbery, organized crime, organized crime, organized crime system for church. Ah, they're using the name of God to rob people. And they will be dancing, making people to think that everything is okay. But everybody knows what is paining them and where is paining them. Yes. Who is calling? Yes, sir. Yeah, my name is Tokwe. I'm calling from Atlanta. Oh, yes, Tokwe. Yes, I, I wanted to tell you that when you were talking about uh, this evening of Thanksgiving, I wanted to tell you that the federal guy started writing the list of this. Is, the list is more than what he even wrote there. <laughs> you understand? No, no, no. The last word is more than that. And it's a way of the church that they use to small people. And you know how many people that have even run away from the church because of that alone. Wow. And this Thanksgiving this, Thanksgiving that, Thanksgiving in the morning, Thanksgiving in the evening, Thanksgiving in the night. And that's why you see most of them, they organize so many services within the week. Wow. Because for every service, you must drop money. <laughs> yes, you must drop money. And that has been the trend. And that is why when you have rich people in your church, the, the easier for you to make money in your church because when people will really drop money. And one thing that I want you to, I want to let people know what people are, the, these pastors are doing is they, they put a lot of burden on their churches. Yeah. Their member. Yeah. Uh, let me now tell you how. Let me tell you now. This, is not, this Thanksgiving is even small one. Hello? Yeah. Now, what they, what they do is this. If they, are, they have a capacity for about 500 people. If they have 100 members in the church, they will go for capacity for 2,000 members. Wow. Can you imagine the building? Yeah, that's what they do. And when they have capacity for 2,000 people and they have maybe 500 members, they will go for a capacity for 5,000 members uh, uh, church. Because they, they will continue to do all these projects and they have so many projects in the church that they want you to contribute into. They want you to contribute to this, they want you to contribute, contribute to that, they want you to a lot of that in the church. Apart from all this, like I told you, it's more than to it, it's more than. 50 type of Thanksgiving that you do in the church. End of the year, Thanksgiving is there. Uh, morning Thanksgiving, afternoon Thanksgiving is there. Uh, evening Thanksgiving is there. Christmas can Thanksgiving is there. Every Thanksgiving is all available in the church, and we see it. So this has been, and um, you see, the, I don't know why people are not thinking right now that, okay, can we just pause in the, at this point and see, is it, is it, oh, oh okay. Okay, what is going on? What is going on? I think people start we start to pause now and be thinking about what you are talking you are talking about, and I think with time there's going to be change. I believe there's going to be Thank change. You, yes, sir. Thank you so you much. Are doing Thank a human you. job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, yes. And this is for Perez. I listen to to the land. Yes. That guy is um, is on the hook. I'm telling. There's a guy in America that loves you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes. God bless. Huh? Brainwashing. Serious brainwashing. These people, these people are dancing. They have told them that they have to dance so that they don't think with their head. So that they will not question anything. They will be dancing like that so that they will not question. 
No time to think. Oh, DSA. I have to call today, even if I'm aware, but listen, listen I, I'll have, I know I have a three minutes and I, I need to make this point. So, number one, I just want to thank you for doing this teaching. This teaching really has actually opened my mind to give my husband the right. My husband used to tell me, I say, you are so brainwashed. I'm like, no, I can't be brainwashed. And, but this teaching today, I'm like, oh my God, I was indeed really brainwashed. Because the reason why I'm saying this, I had my son uh, three years ago. And when I had my son, uh, we are going to African church. And then he, uh, uh, the pastor was like, okay, we need to do uh, Thanksgiving service and then uh, dedicate the son to, to, to God. And my husband thought that we're just going to like do dedication, go to church and do dedication. And then I told him, no, we have to cook. And then, yes, for the church, is, there's a pressure there. They don't actually come out and say, oh, you have to do this, 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 because other people have done it. So you just feel that and directly the pressure to do it. That is so, what is called brainwash. That is a tactic yes. of brainwashing. Yes, so I, at that moment, we are moving to one house to another, and we have to put down the uh, down payment for the house, but we had to cook, and it was more than 300 people that came, so we have to cook for all those people, and then give them food, drinks, everything. Can you imagine the expenses after having the baby? And then also, all those people that came, they bring envelopes, right? But the envelopes were for church, not for my husband and I, wow. you know, the church kept that money. So all this is just so true. And DSA, I, I mean, I can't thank you enough for doing this teaching because it's the most needed. And I also think, DSA, I know you're saying that you're not gonna, you're not going to Nigeria now, and like something needs to be like online classes for people to follow, you know, something to start a new generation of doing things in agriculture because it's really bad. Like today actually really opened my eyes to see that you know, we were all brainwashed and it's really bad. So thank you so much, DSA, for all you do. I, I'm thankful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Oh. These people have destroyed our people. They have destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. People can't, that's why people can't own their homes. They can't send their children to school properly. They can't maintain their health care. Hello? Hello? Hello, good, hello. good evening, Pastor Sunday. Yes, evening. Who is speaking, please? It's, been, it's Benita from London. Yeah, how are you, my sister? It's been a while. Hey, I'm good, thank you. Pastor Sunday, I feel ashamed of myself. Because the video you showed today yeah. about the Thanksgivings in Winners Chapel, yeah. I was actually there on that day. Ooh. So I was watching and my husband saw me. He said, look at you. Ah! <laughs> Master Sunday, this is true. Wow. They Ooh. are truly brainwashing you by wow. praise and worship. Ooh. For Thanksgiving services. Basically, that day, me and my husband were sat at the back. We just came, like, just to attend the service, but we didn't really know they was going to do this Thanksgiving. <laughs> and we only prepared for, for our Titan offerings. We didn't have extra money on us. So that's why we were sat at the back. Yeah, go ahead. So we were not really understanding what they were doing. So I'm just calling to confirm that what you're saying is really true. They are brainwashing people through using music, first of all, because it's an instrument. There is like a good atmosphere. So you feel confident to come forward and dance and give the money. Wow. But this, it's not really real what they're doing. Wow. So this is not just tithes or offering. No, it's not just tithes and offerings. When you come forward, you're just coming to dance and you just give the money. It's got nothing to do with the Bible or the scriptures. Too bad. Too it's just bad. an extra activity that doing to get your money. There's none of God in these things. Brainwashing people. This wickedness happening here. Thank you so much, yeah. Benita. Thank, Thank you. you, Pastor. You see, you see the room where people are dancing? They are just gyrating. They, they make them to forget their challenges. They make them to forget their real issues that are facing them 
real life issues. They are not thinking about them. Look what they are doing. Look what they are doing. Emotions. They reduce people to instincts. Like biomasses. They reduce people to biomasses. Just, you know, biological masses that are just, you living by instincts. And I heard that some churches do it every month. Every month. This is apart from the, so, so I don't understand. So if you do it every month, it means you don't have to do it for your admission, for your children, for your child birth, for your barrier. If you already do once, a single one a month, right? You don't have to do for every other thing. Or apart from the apart from the monthly one, do you still have to do for each event in your life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you do every month, and then you still do each event in your life. Ah, mm -hmm. uh -uh, no, that's too much. No, that's it's not possible. That is too much. Then that is just arm robbery. That just arm robbery. That is just arm robbery. Hello? Yeah. Who is calling me? Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. You have to put okay. off your... You have to, you? You've got to put off your Facebook. Okay. The voice, my voice okay. on the okay. background is, is disturbing, so I cannot hear okay. what you are saying very well. Okay, how do we do that now? You've got to put do that now. To remove the volume. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, please. Okay. Hi. I have some questions to ask. Yes, please. Can you hear me very clearly? Very clearly. My name is Dayo. Yes, please. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Egypt. Yes, please. But I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Nigeria. Yes, please. Um, you say you pay... Uh, uh, I'm going to ask a question about tithe. Yes, please. I know, I know it's quite different from the one from the test giving. Yes. So you said you said you do pay tithes. Yes, please. I want to ask, where do you pay your tithe to? Okay. That's and as, and the second the, the second question is is that you have many branches in Ukraine. Yes. Right? Yes. But do do you? Oh, I, I mean, you you your is an uh, is, is headquarter. Yes. The rest branch are they bringing money to the headquarter? No. Maybe no. No. Okay, okay, thank you. About the tithe? Yes. Who do you pay your tithe to? I pay my tithe to the church, to our church. Okay. I pay my tithe to the church okay. because yes. I know what they do with the church. I mean, we, we, we know what they do with the money. I see the activities of the church, and I see how the money is being used to uplift the hopeless people in the society. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. About the Thanksgiving. Yes. About the Thanksgiving. And uh, we are Nigeria church. Yes. We do Thanksgiving every month. I don't understand this thing. I don't I'm hey, finding it difficult to grasp. Months. Because okay, let me ask you a question, brother. If you know Nigerian church, it, once you do that one every month, so you don't you will not need to do again for your child bath or for your admission or for your graduation or for events in your life. Or you will still have to do those ones. Separate from the every month one. Oh, in my own church, in my own church, it's not compulsory. It's yes. just when it comes from your mind. Yes. They didn't demand for you to pay anything when you're doing child education or whatsoever thing. But every month one, Uncle. What about every, every month, month one? Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's a Thanksgiving every month. Okay. I'm every hearing your question now. I'm ready to answer your question. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. And may God give you strength to carry it all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Because Nigeria, Nigeria Church is business. Wow. Wow. It's a business. Wow. It's a, it's a business. Thank you. Thank you. What are these people doing? Just brainwashing everybody. Dancing, dance, dancing. What is that dance? What has that dancing solved in Nigeria? Look at what they are doing, as if they are in the party. This dancing thing, what has it solved in Nigeria? How long have you been dancing like this? And how many problems have been resolved? Just brainwashing people everywhere. In America, where the white people don't even dance at all. 
That's where the place is developed. Hello? Hello, Jesse. Yes. Hello, Jesse. Yes, we are hearing you. Make you talk. Oh. Yeah, this is this is Modi from Houston, Texas. Yeah, nice to hear from you, man. Thank you. Um, um people have been asking questions that uh, you were emphasizing on this that don't you come to Nigeria? No. And when you come, don't you don't you attend churches? No, I've not been there. I've, I've not been there in the been... last ten years. We have been on this for a very long time. And sometimes these factors are not to be blamed. Some people want to do show off. There, there is something. Uh, there is only one time. It's like suffering and smiling, sir. So some people want that Thanksgiving day to come so that they can show the new stuff that they bought, the new shoes, the new bags, and they want to give money. They want to show off. There are some people like that. And again, sir, I want to ask a question. How many times should a believer have um, baptism? One now. Because, uh -huh, because in Nigeria, when you attend a church, and probably you don't like, you, you start their believer's class, you must go for baptism. Mm -hmm. After that baptism, probably you don't like that church again, even with your certificate. If you go to another <laughs> church, you have to start again. You have to do that baptism again. It is because they are all building their kingdom, not the kingdom of God. That is not for God, that is for even, themselves. Even if it is 10 churches you change to, and you show them the 10 certificates, you attend a new church. Be because they, because they are all baptizing you, they are, they are baptizing you into their own covenant, not into Christ. Uh -huh. Because that's another point that, that I want you to, 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 to know. To note so that you can educate us better on that too, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yes. Hello? Yes, please. Yeah, good evening. Yes, My please. Name is, uh, I'm calling from Germany. Yes, please, Brenda. Yeah, um, first of all, this today's topic is something very shocking to me. I still don't know what to say because I was thinking why else we the um, DSA bring up again until I saw Thanksgiving. <laughs> First of all, I have, I have a lot of points I wrote down. Number one, if you touch on this Thanksgiving, and um, I already wrote it on the YouTube, that means there is no church in Nigeria at all, as I was speaking now. That means Jan come January 2018, we have to start new churches, because there is no church. If you have an accident and you are healed, you will dance to the front for Thanksgiving. Wow. If you, if anything happens to you, even maybe the next year they will change you to sleep and wake up, come and do Thanksgiving, because Thanksgiving is everywhere. So that means no church is safe. But there is something I, I, I have uh, that's that's coming to my mind. Is it that the pastors don't know, or they are just wicked? They because weak. I think now I used to believe that they don't know, but uh, uh, this one is too much. Because I was, I, I've been, I'm 28, and I've been preaching since I was 21. So. When I ran 25, I went to a pastor school. So everything, if you go to a ministry college or something, you learn what they do in that church. Yeah. And I, I, I've met pastors that say that God told them that this year we must do Thanksgiving. You must wear your best clothes um, for the Thanksgiving service, and you must bring highest money, uh, highest, you know, uh, the, the biggest money you have for the year that you want to give to God to thank him for everything. So is it that the pastors don't know of course, somebody already wrote something that they are copying one another, or is it that they are lying that God told them, or is it that they are just being wicked? Because, because, it's because right it, now, I've it, it, not it, really spoken in it, a long time like this, but I'm really confused now whether they don't know, or they are being wicked, or they are just trying to copy other churches. It is because they need to raise money. It is greed. They are being driven by greed only. Okay. Uh -huh. Then I, I have a mother. My mother is 65. Mm -hmm. And the question is, I've tried to explain so many things to her about church, and but she doesn't seem to understand. So what can we do? Because if I send her money tomorrow, she will pay building mm -hmm. offering, tithe, Thanksgiving <laughs> offering. We will pay all sorts that into, we are four, and all of us send money to my mother. So my mother has a lot of money every month. And I, towards the end of the month, by 15 or 20, she's already broke. And wow. she's not doing anything. 
Because she's taking them to church. Yes, because they are building for the Lord. They are fighting for the Lord. They are doing all. And she, she doesn't. So I think what can we do for such kind of people? My mother is educated. How much more people who are not educated? She's been brainwashed. So what can, what can, what can we do for the people like that, in that level that been in church for 60 years or 50 years and Just you be, can't tell them anything. That you can't tell them anything. That. It's because of social, and I need to raise another point. It's because of social media we are getting to know all this because these things have been in churches since. Wow. Since like I was five or two, they've been doing all these things in church, especially in the CAC. They put the basket in front so that there is no human being in that church that will not dance. <laughs> Because there is no way you want to do it, you will dance shamelessly, even if it costs you walking back home from Mojota to anywhere, wow. you have to drop something. Because the basket is in front, so we are moving row by row, so you are following. <laughs> so there is no way you will not drop something. I said you put your hand in the basket and you didn't drop something there. <laughs> what, what do we do today? There are two other points. Okay, what? What you should do, what we sh you should do is just to leave her alone. Tell her, tell her the truth, but don't force her, don't force anything on her. Just let okay. her know that there is an alternative. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then I have to tell everybody on the platform, 90% of Christians are found that don't read the Bible. They're just churchgoers. And that's why these things have lingered on for a long time. Yes. So I encourage everybody to pick up their Bibles, read it. Nobody says, they, they have so many doctrines in Nigeria church. Finish the Bible in one year. You cannot understand the Bible if you finish the Bible in one year. <laughs> read one book. Read Isaiah. Just study. Don't finish. The, you are not competing with anybody. <laughs> and finally, I have a question, DSC, which is which has been lingering noise on the internet. Are the, is the black generation, are we cursed? No. Or we are genetically defect? I think it is ignorance. That's why I wrote that book, Mountain of Ignorance. Concerning the black race, are we cursed or not? Go and I just released a book last week. It's called How Blacks Brought Civilization to Europe. When you read that book, you will discover that we are not cursed. The only problem is that ignorance has hijacked the church. And okay, all of or is it genetic? Because I studied it's genetics. Not, it's school. not genetic. It's not genetic. Okay, okay. Yeah, Thank if, you. If it's genetic, my mother couldn't read and she couldn't write. If it is genetic, I would have been the same. <laughs> wow. Look what is happening. People, they are just exploiting the, the God-fearing virtue that our African people have. We have God, we have, we fear God. It is that God-fearing something that they are taking that advantage of and they are exploiting. So, because people fear God, they have reverence for God. Now, that is now what these people are exploiting. It is greed. It is greed. I've turned it off. Good, good. We are hearing you. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Gladys. I'm calling from Germany. Okay. Blessings. I'm so blessed by this your platform. Really so blessed because I was a slave in Winner Chapel Church. Um, concerning all those sacrifices at the end of the month, they will say you have to give end of the month sacrifice. Wow. What you see here that the people are dancing is like uh, David Oyedigo who said is one night with the king. You have to put on your best dress and come and dance in front of the king, then you will be blessed. Uh -huh. Then he will give testimony like when he was just having like 2,000 naira in a month, he would bring all the money and give to God. That's why he is so rich like that. If you give the little that you have to God, that's how God will raise you up and you will be rich. That's how they brainwash people. The little that you have, you will just take and come and give to them and thinking that in future you will be rich like him. I'm Really, I'm Robert. Now I'm really, really free from all those giving, giving the end of the month. You have to give, you have to give type child dedication. You come with special offering. Every time it's just special, special offering. Even here in general, there's one church that I was attending. Like in January, they will say that if you want to give the end of month offering, you give in 10. That 10 is like 100 euro. February, you give in two figures, starting from two, not 20 euros, 
That is 200 euros. Uh, uh, Just like that. <laughs> no, I can't believe it. What Just kind of like church, that, what kind so of church is that? Is like, yeah. That is an Ambro Bridge church. Well, when it's like this December, then they say December, you calculate the whole of your tithes and calculate it by 12. That's how God will bless you for the next year that is coming. You just continue I'm giving, robbers. giving until you are dry. Is that also in Nigeria? Pastor church? dedication. There's one day that I asked the pastor, I said, but this pastor dedication that they make every year is not in the Bible. They say that pastor is the one caring for your soul. So you have to pay the pastor. My I was like, I don't know what to believe again. It's believe the much. pastor or believe the Bible. Now I don't go to any church. I believe just in God. And this uh, platform has really helped me a lot. I'm free for being a church slave. Thank you very much, dear. Gladys, Thank you. Gladys, Thank a lot. Gladys, do you know Justine? Justine, no. She lives in Germany? Yes. And she's here right now. Huh? Oh. Are you in Stuttgart? Huh? No, I'm in Dortmund. Dortmund, okay, okay. But you are Stuttgart. Yes. Okay, uh, yes. Just, Justine is from Stuttgart, and she's right here for the HMT. She has arrived there already for HMT. Oh, God, I'm planning to visit Ukraine also, but I don't know, maybe next year when I go for the day, I really want to plan. I really, I'm planning really to come to that God Embassy because I'm now, like, free. 21 days of fasting. You are fasting because I, Papa tells you to fast. You don't fast because you feel like fasting. Are you serious? Uh, uh, 21 days of fast? Mm -hmm. 21 days of fasting in January. You have to fast for 21 days. Papa said that you should fast. Then he, he gives his own topic uh, of prayer. You pray according to what he tells you to What have they pray. done with our people? Oh my God. If you like, you eat, he will tell you if you eat before 6 o'clock, you are eating poison. I can't believe it's it. just like are you, you just living in bondage under them, if, really in bondage. If you eat before six o'clock, you are eating. Ah, ah, you are ah, eating poison. You said, have to eat who? just after six. No. You have to eat. Then there is the covenant hour of prayer every five thirty to six thirty in the morning. People go to church every day. My God, you you do too much, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So Thank you, DSA. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. I'm I want to visit you, Ken. I must come there and visit that platform. Thank you. God bless. Wow. Do you, do you people read Animal Kingdom? They have turned the church to George Owen. George Owen. This is George Owen all over again. This is what Motunayo is right here. Hello. Hello. Yes. How are you, man? We, I don't know what's wrong with your line, but try to talk. Maybe we will hear you. Hello, are you hearing me now? Yes, please. It's me. I think the line is not good for that. So, Animal Kingdom, George Orwell. Having been traumatized by slave owners, our ancestors were freed physically, but not in their minds. The exact thing they criticize the slaves for, they are doing now, yeah? This is Animal Kingdom all over again. Animal Farm, they call it. I think Animal Farm. Animal Farm. Yes, Animal Farm. This is all, they have turned the people to Animal Farm. Okay, somebody, inspiration is writing here that my uncle built a new house. So when he was doing the dedication, but he gave the, the pastor, who is a white person, $100 for the dedication of, after the dedication of the house, that the pastor was so shocked. <laughs> the white pastor was so shocked. Why should you be giving me money because I bless your house? He said, the man was so ashamed. That, oh my God, what is it? The pastor is saying, what are you doing? Who told you? Who even taught you? You have to be giving money because your house was dedicated. Mm -hmm. Hello? I, did a great I just got this revelation. I never knew this thing is happening all over in churches in Africa. <laughs> you know what? You know what? When I, saw the, when I saw the topic today, I was just like closing my eyes, put all my hand on my face as if I'm ashamed of 
what has been happening in the church. So you know you about know, this I, very well. Can you, can you hear me? I said, do you know about this one very well? I know it very well. Actually, I practice it as well. <laughs> you understand? I practice it as well. Where but you know, you know when, you, when you, you begin to say, when you people, begin to say this now. Where do you people learn this thing from? Okay, because it's what I learn from the church that ordained me. Okay, okay, because okay. they do that. Mm. All right, but let me let me let me say this. I I am doing it, believing that um, it is part of what church should be doing. Wow. Okay. That, that is my belief. Okay. So it is just copy, now. It is just now, copy, copy. now. It is mainly copy, now, copy, copy. Yeah, yeah, like copy, copy, exactly. But now I begin to I begin to see because the reason why I'm saying I begin to see is this: Who are we deceiving? You see, you see the people that bring um, Thanksgiving offering, right? We call it Thanksgiving, and we always do it every month on a monthly basis. My God. You know, we, 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 you know, we're going to say to the, to the uh, people in the church, God has been protecting you. God has been guiding you. You've been in the church for over a month. But, and that, then but, you need Pastor, to to but that is not yeah. fair. God is also protecting unbelievers now all over the country. You have 15 yes, million yes, people. Yes, yes, yes. But you know what I want to say? <laughs> that what you're saying is true. And I begin, to, I begin to see the truth from what you are showing now. And I know that many pastors in Nigeria may not actually see that this is not scriptural. But now that you are showing it, anyone that is doing it ignorantly should begin to see that they are practicing what they shouldn't be practicing. Yeah. Just like the way I'm seeing it now. Yeah. Just the way I'm seeing it now. You understand? Yeah. But this is what I want to say. This is what I want to say. This is important. You know, many, many, many times that we call on Thanksgiving and people dance like this to the front, many people, because of the shame they have, because they don't have money in their pocket, they will take a, an empty envelope, empty envelope, and they will be the one to dance most. And they will put the same empty envelope because they have no money and they don't want to be ashamed because it's like we are being forced and we are forcing them to do it. Ah. So they will take empty envelope. Pastor will not know that what is in their hand is empty. Wow. But only God, the God that they say that they are giving thanksgiving to, knows that nothing is in their hand. Wow. So now, I begin to be reasoning. Are we actually doing this for God, or we are doing it for church, or we are doing it because of our egoistic, you know, egocentric manner? Yeah. Because we want to sow. We want to show that we have money. And other people that do not have money, what will happen to them? Yeah. I think the way I am reasoning now, and the way I see, it is unnecessary because for anyone to, to be, say that. If, even if anybody wants to give anything, it should be personal relationship with God. Let it God, should be, yes. Let God lead somebody. Let God speak to his heart. Let him do that what is God it. is telling that is him. It. Why should you be a that, I agree. 100% agree. 100% agree. But to be, to be sincere with you, I think church need to change the focus. They need to have a shift over these many things that have been practiced. And I think it's because of our culture, because our culture, we always want to show anyway that we have something. We always want to show. Like if you, if you, if you have a, a new certificate, you graduated, you want to show that you just finished. If you are married, you want to show, you know, you, are you saying? Well, it is the opposite of what the Bible you. says. The Bible says we should be modest. The let your modest be known to all men. Modest. That's it. Modesty is what That's the Bible true. preaches. Absolutely. Second, Absolutely. Secondly, the Bible says, let your left hand not know what your right hand is doing. Yeah, but this this is not been this is not been taught in the church. And it's not been taught. And thirdly, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That is true. Absolutely true. You see, that's what you said now. Many people understand it in different ways. People will say to you, that is when the Holy Spirit is telling you to do something. It should be only you that knows that the Holy Spirit is. So they wouldn't relate it to this. Meanwhile, it's actually in every daily life. In every daily life. In any decision you make. That means that people have not been taught to make that the, the basis of Christianity is personal relationship with God. It means that people that have not it. been taught to walk and become friends with God. It, people have been hanged 
and be hinged to, no, to ceremonies. That it is through ceremony they worship God. But we don't worship God through ceremony anymore. Jesus said That's nobody it. will come to this mountain again. Nobody on this mountain to Jerusalem will come again. It is no more that. It is only now those who are led by the spirit and truth. If the worship God now is only in spirit and truth. No more ceremony. No more anniversary. No more, no more, no, no more pageantry. No more all those things they don't count anymore. No more mountain, no more Jerusalem, no more things like that. It has to be only truth and spirit. You are absolutely right, man of God. You are absolutely you see, you see what you are saying now. Believe me sincerely. What you are saying now, let's watch for now till next next year, January, and see a lot of pastors who are so foolish in their mind, who cannot reason the way Bible reasoning, who doesn't have the knowledge of the word of God, how they're going to be actually coming against everything you say, because many people actually start church because of their pocket. And I want you to know that. Many people are not really called by God. And people are following them as if God called them. Because if you, if you, if you, if anybody says something to you, and you now know that what you are doing is wrong, if you are so intelligent and you really have the love of God, you need to change. Just like you are doing, like, just like you are doing now. Just like what I'm doing now. But many people, they actually start church because they want to make money. And if it is because of money that they start church, anytime you say anything about money, they're going to kick against you. And what, I'm, they, they, what I'm noticing is that is that the church in Nigeria has lost, they've lost direction. They've lost the purpose of the church. Since the, the purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. They don't know what purpose, what church is meant for and what church is meant to do. And because that purpose is lost, they are bringing in um, fake, fake replacements. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Very correct. Very correct. Very correct. I just, I just, you know what, you know what, I know one thing. I, I, I said something when uh, Mario was doing a program, I think it was yesterday, or the day before yesterday. I said many people have been listening to what we call lies. And this has been over and over and over. They have been listening to lies. And for somebody now to say the truth to them, because somebody that has been listening to lies, and he already become li liar himself because of the lying that he's been listening to. So whenever the truth comes, they're going to resist it. And not only that, they're going to fight that man or that woman that is saying the truth. And they're going to think that they are right because they already been listening to lies. It's already become part of them. Pastor, so what, do you know I've been born again for 30 something years. And I've, yes. I've lived on the earth for 50 something, for 50 years now. Yes, I never yes. knew this thing happens. Frankly, well, I, 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 I can't believe it. You, you, it, it's because you are not used to Nigeria. Okay, like for instance, me, yeah, I was born in Nigeria, right? I became a born again Christian in Nigeria. I lived there for almost like 15 years, being a Christian there in Nigeria. So all of the things they're doing, I already seen it. So when I came to this country, it's because I went back to learn, to actually go to theology. That's why my mentality is changed. I knew that many things they do in the church in Nigeria is, is lying. Okay, for example, God, for example, I just read a comment now. Somebody built a house in the UK and yes. we invited the pastor, but in that community, only white people are there. And so the white, the pastor is a white person. So, and during the housewarming and the, you know, when they were blessing the house, uh, they were opening the house, dedicating the house, the man brought 100 pounds, 100 dollars out, or maybe it was in the US, to give, to give, no, as Thanksgiving. And the pastor was embarrassed. What are you doing? Why are you giving me this money? Oh, because uh, I want to thank the man didn't even know how to explain again. He, he was so embarrassed that ah, he saw he was saying, but who brainwashed? Who told you? Who taught you to be doing giving money? Because oh because, my god, it's a shameful thing. 
Oh my God. Yeah, but you, you see, this is what I'm saying. It's because of our, our mentality, the show off. Anything we do, yeah, we want to show that, oh, we are the best. We did, we just did it. Even when that thing is not the best. We just want to show that, oh, we've got this, we've got that. If you buy a car, you want to do that, let's give it. Car that you can no, buy but, here, no one will even no, want to buy a car. But, but this is not even card mentioned now. This, you said every month. They don't even need to do anything. Nothing needs to happen. Every month you have to come and dance and bring something. So it means it's also some tradition built on greed. That is it. You are right. You are right. Absolutely right. And I, you know what? I just, I just thank God that God put you up there. God knows what he's doing. You know? If I, if I do what you are doing, I will not go anywhere. In fact, my word will not go anywhere. And I will tell you why. Because you, God already singled you out. God has allowed you to do great and mighty things. That even the people that you are talking to now knew that you've done something in the past and in the present time that they cannot compete with and they cannot say it's useless. You understand? They cannot say, what, do you, what did you do? You don't do anything. God has placed you there and God has given you the grace to do that what you, are, you, what you already done. Now that you are doing this now, all the mouth of people will be shut because God has bring a voice in your mouth and you are speaking the right thing and i know that if you continue doing what you are doing this is going to change nothing can stop it nothing can stop it and i know that i know if you can touch my heart and my heart is changed believe me nothing can change what you you just continue doing what you are doing because the grace of god for things to change is in what you are doing is in your life already i knew it and I know that many people already see that. God bless you, man of God. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you, sir. Ooh, wow. Ah, what is it one doing? In for church? Look what, what I'm seeing, you know. This one is coming to pray money. Uh, uh, wait. This is also dedication, eh? Ah. She make it. Ah. Wait, wait. He, the guy is shooting. He's, I think he's shooting money to the stairs. So. He's shooting money in the air. So this is also Thanksgiving. Gone money spray. Ah. Eh. I think we have a caller. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello, dear sir. Yes, sir. We are hearing you. Good. Good, good evening, sir. This is uh, Norbert from Cologne, Germany. Yes, we are hearing you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a great one today. Uh, the topic today is uh, wonderful, sir. Wonderful topic. Yes, sir. Uh, it is. It is big. It is because because um, I just thank God for your life because uh, God took you out of Nigeria at a very young age and you have a different mentality. So you are one out of the 250 million Nigerians that otherwise, if not, you have been you probably you would have been in the same in the same thinking and the same structure of church uh, of church uh, agenda. Like the way they are doing it in, in, in Africa, in Nigeria, sir. Wow. And, 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 and yes, I have a question. Yes. And the question is, when you are called as a pastor, yes. where did you receive? Who, who, who gives you the, the rundown of a church, the program of a church? Because what I know is that the earliest churches, they have fellowship. They meet together and they, and they fellowship. But today, when you say you are called as a pastor, who gives you, where did you receive the program of the church? The program? Do you mean the program? The, pro, the rundown of the church, the activity of the church. Who, 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 who gives who give you the, the program to go to the church? No, I never. Did you, did I you never, receive it from God? No, or I, how, 
how did the activities of a church come to existence? No, just from I just by praying to God, by being led by the Spirit, I never received any program from anywhere, from anybody. Just by reading the Bible, you know, and uh, yes, but today, yes, yes, sir. Yes, but today you 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 will agree with you will agree with me. Yes. And most pastors on the platform will agree with me that most of the pastors today they receive the program maybe from the mentor with those who brought them up, like Oyede Paul and all these people that they have produced so many pastors out there, and these pastors they are the one following the very top share of their mentors. Okay, so they are repeating the mistakes now. Of course, of course, they are repeating their mistakes. Hmm. Wow. And DSA, let me tell you my own personal experience with my own church, my own pastor here in Cologne, Germany. And the church which I'm not still going there anymore. Do you know when I had my second daughter and my wife told me I was not around by then, my wife told me he wants to do dedication. Okay. And then I was not I was not in accord with it. The whole thing, and I, I told her, no, I, I'm not, I, I, I'm not, I, I, uh, I'm not to dedication. Yes. She said, no, she has to do it because uh, that's how they are doing it. So you see, the brain, what is that? Individuals don't think. Yes. I listen to your series of thinking, and it blessed me a lot. Yes. So 99% of us, we don't think. Wow. We don't analyze we don't receive information and analyze it that. you see bible says the word was with god and the word was with him so what you receive is as a word it becomes an action yeah so what you receive you analyze it and it becomes an action to you yeah. so like today in the churches we don't think we don't analyze this word we don't analyze situation we are just consumers of everything yeah and I told my wife, I told the pastor, Pastor, I am the father of this child, and I will not like this child to be dedicated. Do you know what he told me? He said, but, oh, Jesus Christ also brought Jesus Christ to church now. <laughs> so, so they are using every means to convince you to do what they want to do. Yeah. And another thing, another thing I want to make, I want to make here on this platform is another area where people are being deceived today is a uh, 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 night vigil. Okay. They organize night vigil with, uh, with 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 different pastors of different towns. This is a business that is going on, especially here in Europe. Wow! I was a victim in my church, and I, what I saw DSA was unbelievable. Do you know after the night the night vigil with the pastor, the visiting pastor, they just went into a room and they shared the money into two. Wow! Wow! So it is, it is just an organized and all these people say, Pastor, they are it's just business empire. They are not Christian, they are not pastors. Wow. So what you are doing on this platform, sir, you are opening the eyes of people. Wow. You are bringing attention to the way people are supposed to worship God. Yeah. I tell you. It will be a catastrophe, there will be a tsunami on that day on the heaven. So many people will be so many disappointed. Wow. That how they think they used to worship God. It's not the way we are supposed to worship God. Wow. And as a Christian, anybody that's on this platform, the important thing is not your G.O., it's not who brought you up, but it's for you to understand how to serve God. Personal relationship. Yes. Because up to now, before you came to ESA, many of us did not know how to serve God. We are just we are just doing it anyhow because we we heard that some people are doing it. Some people are going there, so we just go there. We have never had this personal encounter with Jesus Christ as you have brought us to understanding. Most so of us are benefiting from this personal relationship with our Savior Jesus Christ. So many of us now are enjoying the benefit. Wow. Do you know, GSA, this time, I don't pray for anything, but everything works for me. Yes. Personal relationship. Personal relationship. 
So thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for what you are doing. And we are just sharing the message how we can do every, any, everywhere we are sharing the message. And, and God will keep guiding you, stretching you. And all the entire team that are there with GSA, please continue. In, and God will bless you all. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. I think we'll go to the message now. Yeah, for me, it's a new uh, topic. I never... In fact, I just want to uh, make my... Yes. Go ahead. Okay, this is the topic here. How churches brainwash you through Thanksgiving. Okay, let's go ahead. Mm -hmm. Psalm 69, 30 says, I will praise the name of God with a song. And I will but define him with thanksgiving. That is a personal thing. You see what is it? I will do it. So how come the church? If I want to do it by the church, I have to be led by the church, by God to do it. You know, it's not my, it's a, not a public thing. It's not a, a demonstration. It's not a ceremonial thing. It is I. It is personal relationship with God. Thanksgiving services or Thanksgiving offerings is when people believe they got some special blessings. You will dress specially. This is what I now discovered, though. That you will dress specially. Oh, and bed time. I shall, I shall be call relatives, cook special drinks. It is a, this is what they are now doing in church. This is like the Old Testament sacrifice, which Jesus has paid the price for our sacrifice. Pastors will specially call these people out. So they dance to the front and dance back after the pastors have prayed for them. What is all that? That's show business. That is show, showing, showmanship. God, serving God, true service of God doesn't have to do with show. A true service of God must not entail any show. It is your, you have to go to your secret place. It is there, your father, who dwells in secret. Your father, who is in secret place, will see the secret of your heart. Your father, who is in secret, who saw you in secret, will now reward you openly. So what these people are doing, they are bringing idol worship into church. This is syncretism, like that brother said from, you know, from America. So you will come together with your nuclear family, nuclear family wearing a show, okay? Friends, colleagues at work, neighbors, relatives, we all come together to do Thanksgiving in the church. I mean, why, why that? Why should you call all these people? If you want to call them, let them come with humility. But why should you attach money to it? During Thanksgiving, the celebrant will have to package special offering to be given in the church. No, so what is that? That's showmanship. That doesn't show with worship of God, service with, for Jesus Christ, or walking with God doesn't have anything to do with showmanship. This is what Jesus Christ was condemning with the Pharisees. This is what the Pharisees were doing. This is what we read in Matthew 20 23. This is what Jesus condemned. Psalm 50, 50 14 says, Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the most high. Even if you have vow that to pay, even if you have, you know, you know, you, you have promised God anything, you know, let it be your own between you and God. It is your vow to the most high. Only you and him. No church in between. No pastor in between. No human being in between. Even when you need to pay a vow to God, it is your personal dealings with God. Your personal relationship with him. All those who come with you must also come with their own offering. That's what I heard now. To support you and thank God for you. That's what I'm hearing. Before, during, and after the wedding ceremony, that's what I heard. You have to do. Can you imagine how we have brainwashed our people? 
after giving birth or naming ceremony, they said you have to. That's, you know, they, that is crazy. Greed. Thanksgiving even for burial ceremony. In some churches, they do family thanksgiving for each household in the church. Such that each week, a number of families are bringing in money for Thanksgiving. Manipulators. Holy people. They just, they, this is a scheming. This is called scheming. This is scheming. This is devising. This is a scheme. This is the fraudulent, fraudulent or defrauding scheme. Thanksgiving after political appointment also. That's what I had in Nigeria happens. That's why they will steal money to bring to the Thanksgiving. They will steal money, corruption, to bring Thanksgiving offering. Thanksgiving after political appointment as governor, commissioner, permanent secretary, chairman of local government, minister, permanent secretary, judiciary, uh, judges, ETC. You see where the corruption is coming from? Pastors are pushing people to corruption. Churches are pushing politicians to corruption because of these Thanksgiving things. Ah, I think the anger of God is ri uh, you know, rising. Oh. I think God's anger is rising against the church in Africa, for sure. That I, 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 just, I, just, I just feel God's anger. That's, God, the cup is full. The cup of God's wrath is full against the church. And the judgment, every judgment starts with the house of God. They go to the extent of saying for promotion at work, you need to come and give thanksgiving. When you retire from work too, you will need to do thanksgiving with your gratuity money. Yeah, and if you go and give your gratuity money, what do you use to build your future? What do you do to retire on? Someone who graduated from higher education, you will need to go and do Thanksgiving. Can you imagine? He has not even worked yet. Especially if your children finish from medical school, you will do Thanksgiving. Sometimes the parents and the child will do each their own Thanksgiving in their own separate churches. If your child finished from law school and is called to the to bar, he will do Thanksgiving. You will do Thanksgiving. Especially the parents. These are especially so for the so-called lucrative causes, you see. It's all about greed. Some have started doing Thanksgiving for traveling. Ab <laughs> they say, oh, oh. They say, oh, the people do Thanksgiving for traveling abroad. So it means if you get visa, you do Thanksgiving. If you get green card, you do Thanksgiving. If you enter plane, you do Thanksgiving. If you come out of plane, you do Thanksgiving. What is all that? They're just humiliating people. Humiliation. Others go for Thanksgiving because they got green card to move out and reset to another country. Psalm 107, however, verse 22 says, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of Thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. But that is all personal. It is between you and your God. If you want to even thank God with the whole group or with your relatives and family, bring them. But he didn't say bring with money. He said, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. That is the sacrifice. Thanksgiving, not money. And declare his works with rejoicing. It's thanksgiving. If we even want to do anything in the church, come and do it. Thanksgiving. Why do you attach money to it? That's what I don't understand. Is it mammon that is now ruling in the church? Why should you, why should everything carry money? You be thief? Yes. All these things are fraud. A way of pastors to defraud gullible members of their hard-earned money. This money is different from title and is also different from offering. This is not counted as income from the members. 
First Corinthians, Second Corinthians nine eleven say, "While you are enriched in everything for all liber, uh, liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God, is all thanksgiving. Give thanks to God by yourself. Leave the church out of this. Leave the pastor out of this. Only God knows where the money goes to, or what it is used for." The question is, why does thanksgiving have to be connected with money? Isn't it possible to come give thanks without giving money? It's like Nigerian pastors have successfully equated giving to the need of the church and the pastors to giving to God himself. Plus that giving to God has to be monetary form. You know, people have just, they have replaced God by themselves. So to give to the needs of the church is now that you are giving to church. You are giving to God. To give to the pastor, you are giving to God. So God doesn't exist. It's the pastor that exists. So the church has replaced the, the, the you know, God. Oh, it's heartbroken, heartbreaking. Let's see some of the way these things are practiced here. Thanksgiving. You see, stop. You see the politicians. These are Nigerian politicians. Bringing money from the budget, most likely, or maybe stolen money or money from the church or from the budget. Can you imagine the governor? and the wife bringing money to the church for thanksgiving so if a pastor and the the the, the, the political office orders have to be bringing money to church like this where would they get it from that's why corruption is being you know encouraged and see what they are doing in church Bring clean water on them. What kind of what have these people done with the church? What have these people done with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? I wonder if there are some, there are sane people left in that country, in the in the religious circles of that country. I'm not sure if there are still sane, you no know, normal, level-headed people left. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. This is Ernest Evan from Germany. Oh, Pastor, Pastor, Ernest. Pastor Ernest, welcome, sir. It, yes, sir. It's been a bit long. Yeah, <laughs> it's a joy to hear from you, sir. Yes. You see the problem. You see the. You see the problem I found myself in, you know. Me, I never had this one before. <laughs> this Thanksgiving, have you been hearing of the Thanksgiving again? Yes, I you, was doing it. You know about I it? Was, ah, Pastor, I've, I've done it time without number. I have, I have spearheaded uh, the Thanksgiving team. <laughs> the, the, the church I work with. Now, for those who don't know me, I'm Pastor Ernest Devon from Germany. Okay. I work, when I came in newly, I work with some churches. And there's this church, um, Ghana church I work with. And uh, because I'm, I'm able to talk to convince people. So um, they did the first Thanksgiving and they made me the chairman of the committee. So we planned it and I was able to talk and convince people. And people gave so much. In fact, that time even the offering was like maybe over 15 times, 15 different types of Thanksgiving offering. And they raised so much money. And um, that one passed. The next year, because there was so much money, they made me another thing, you know, the next chairman again for the next uh, Thanksgiving. And we did it. The following year, when they called me again, I now called them and said, must we do Thanksgiving every year? 
They now said, uh, yeah, we have to accept. No, that I would advise we suspend it. And because I, I, I also look back, all the money they, they raised, they have not done nothing. And I never saw how they used the money. But I began to question them. As I, I asked them, I said, but the church is not registered. And the church doesn't have accounts. Where does the money go to? Wow. And why should we be doing Thanksgiving every day? Wow. So I told them, in fact, I, then I never even knew you, but I had to question why mm -hmm. we have to do things every year, getting all this money from the people. You know and why? Is be? It is because you have conscience. Yes. You have the fear of God. Yes. So the third year, I told them, no, I'm sorry, I won't, I won't lead this team, uh, this team anymore. So I'm not going to be part of it. And they did it. And before I knew it, they started um, planning against me. It's like I wasn't, because I was wondering, the church doesn't have an account and the church is not registered. Why are we just getting money from people? What are we doing with the money? So I, I never knew that this was, you know, this really brought hatred on me. At the end of the day, they turned against me, so I had to leave the church. Because you are against their money, went more, yes. Yes. Something. So I left the church. So later, when we started our ministry, well, because I got, okay, later I got to know you. As I told you before, I used to say, I, so I was mixing everything. I was mixing your message with the winner's message, with Mountain of Fire's prayer, and all those things. So we were doing Thanksgiving every year. But I, you know, after listening so, to you so much, I just felt deep within me that this Thanksgiving wasn't so necessary. For two years now, we've not done Thanksgiving in our church. Wow. Yeah, because I, I was just wondering, I don't know, because you never pointed this out, but I just felt deep within me that, why do people, why do they really need to come with money to thank God? Because I used to promote it. You have to dress well. You have to appear before God. I mean, so I didn't really see that need. So I was wondering, you know, no, no. So I just decided to suspend. And we've not done Thanksgiving for two years now. And, uh, so what you're saying is really true. It's, it's not about money. It's not about dressing. It's about personal relationship with God. If you want to thank God, we can thank God. Like when we, we, would, we would still thank God, you know, maybe in the new year, but we are not going to do like come to dress and dress and come and come and give money and all that. Even though in the past when we do, we had money, people will give. Even I won't promote it. I will just, people come, let's dance and praise God for, you know, keeping us all through the year. Yet still, I, I still felt it wasn't that really necessary. No. So that's just my, my, my contribution and my experience. I believe what you're doing, Pastor, is really great. And I want to thank you and to keep encouraging you. It's people are getting delivered and the message is really going far. Thank so, you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for your courage and keep it up. We are, we are behind you. We are doing our best. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hi, JP. Good evening. Yes. How are you, Joyce? That's Joyce, right? Yes, this is Joyce calling from New York. Yeah, Good evening, nice JP. to hear from you today. Yes, thank you, DHC. Um, thank you, everyone. And this is a very um, sensitive topic that you came up with today again. And I'm telling you, this one is even more, more, uh, uh, this made more attention, I think, even more than the time. Because from where I watched it before, the, the Living Faith Church, where I told you before, um, the, the, the way they come up with the Thanksgiving stuff and crap is, is just mind-blowing. And, you know, when I was there, I never saw anything wrong with it. As a matter of fact, I actually thought that it is biblical that, Everyone has to do one kind of uh, Thanksgiving or, uh, you know, accident Thanksgiving. Now, let me even say something. In living faith, these are some of the Thanksgiving that they do, right? You have the normal Thanksgiving, yearly one, and that is the one that you were showing earlier on, right? That everybody comes in their nat native attire. If you're Yoruba, you tie it in red, buba, all kind of stuff, and the evil come with their attire. Everybody does the same thing. Your language, you know, you just come. And in most cases, they separate them. The evil stay in their own corner, 
the house of the Yoruba, blah, 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 oh, they all show their color on that day. That is usually the annual Thanksgiving. And uh, now, is, is money connected to that too? I didn't get that. It's all, is, is, do they have to give money as well or just cultural oh, display? Of course, of course. DSA, what, that is where I'm even going, that all these 10 people in, in Winners um, Church in Nigeria or worldwide today are all connected to money. Wow. To money, to money, yes. Now, in January, after the Chilo um, stuff they do in December, for the end of the year, close of the account, yes. That's the way I see it. <laughs> then in January, in January, they come up with something they call um, 21 days pay on fasting. And I tell you what, morning, afternoon, and night, people who go to work, they're at work, and then when they come up from work, they come for the evening one. But if you don't have a job and you're not working, you are there morning and afternoon and night. And in all of these services, Monday through Friday to Sunday, you pay your tithe and your offering. Ask me where you'll be paying tithe every, every day. Ask me how you be giving offering every day when you meet in church like that. They come up with all sorts of programs, right? This program is, is supposed to generate money. And now this is a trick that churches do today in Nigeria. They come up with um, all kinds of, you know, money-making programs to, to, you know, blind the minds of the people. But the theme of this program are going to be captured in a godly way, like, uh, you know, they might tell you um, enough is enough. Um, I am on top. I know all this crazy stuff that people who are truly going through trauma, tribulations, all kind of situations in life, or health issues, or even financial problems. When they see enough is enough, now that gears you. They come to the puppy and even tell you, prepare to what? Come with a best seat. And then God is going to open the door. Your finances is going to be is going to pop back. Your health is going to bounce back. Black. And then you see people. You don't even blame them because why would they not believe when you don't read the Bible? You don't even understand. Like I used to be. I was never understanding. I don't understand what it means. To me, I see everything they were doing as biblical. I see like, oh, really? This is how Christendom is supposed to be. But unfortunately. With your teaching all this while that I've been following, I have seen all the wrong, all the so, so, so wrong that we've been doing. And it's so sad and irritating. Sometimes when I, I've been so angry in my spirit all day, listening and seeing the video, and these are the things that I have been involved, like 100% involved in some of these activities. But I never saw anything wrong in them. Wow. To me, I see it as... Um, you know, something that we have to do as a Christian, you must have to do it. If you don't do it, then you're not a Christian, right? And then you see some of the, this seed, this is seed of traveling. If you're, tra this was in a church. That seed I was of invited tra in. traveling? I was invited in, yeah. I was invited in one church and, um, well, I think it was a Thanksgiving or something. I can't remember what it, the, the program was for. So I was there and I, suddenly the man was beginning to call for all kinds of seed. Okay, if you're going to be traveling this weekend, stand up, come up with your seed. I'm like, wow, really? And this is even different. We don't do this in living faith where I was before. I never saw this in living faith. But they all package it into a new modernized farm that you, they don't have to be mentioning one after another. That's why you see monthly, they come and they tell you if you have a special seed, if you have a birthday gift, you have a child bearing seed, if God has done something for any member of your family, even if the family member is not in that church, you know, all kinds of things. They'll tell you, just come. All of you just come to the, come forward to the pulpit. And then when you come, of course, you're not coming with empty hands because you can't come to God with an empty envelope. You have to come with something. So you come, you drop your money, and then you dance. The reason for the dancing is this, that if those who are going through problems, they will tell you, come and dance your sorrow away. <laughs> You come and dance your sorrow away. And those who have maybe um, one promotion or the other, come and celebrate. So as you're coming, you're celebrating your dancing. So you don't have to come and not dance. You're dancing because you're expecting or you have been given something or you've been blessed by God. So I, this is one of the few contributions I wanted to put in. I so much thank you, dear. This one is even a mind-blowing, more, more mind-blowing than Titan. Because Titan is just one faction. Now, this is a more broader aspect. 
you know, more broader aspect. And I thank you so much. I say God will bless you. What you have started, you will finish well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, you, Jesus. thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yes. Hello. Hello, Hello. Brother Charles. Yeah, uh, good evening, sir. Yes, sir. And I greet you all, better people in the platform. <laughs> Thank yes, you. Yes, so there, there are some serious men for the platform. Uh, and I greet you, I respect you. Thank you. Um, uh, somehow, all this while, I'm just tired to call because whenever I, read, I, I watch some of the videos to share there, yeah, it, it, it makes my, my, my heart be, to be bleeding and makes me so sad. Yes, yes. Anyways. Uh, let me let me first thank God that so that the issue that is keeping you behind the Ukraine, I believe, is for a reason. Yeah, is now to, that, in, that yeah, is, is to make to I, is to make you to me, know more. Me to add, me, me to add, they see the thing, no, saying that God is yeah. doing the thing, no. Ah, uh -uh. yeah, it is is to make you to to to, to really know much about Nigeria, the battle ahead that mm. you have to face. Wow, it's the reason for it. Wow, and I thank God for that mm. because. Uh, because the way I'm saying things, the way I see you, you know, with surprises, surprising are some issues that is so common and usual in, in, in Nigeria churches, gives me a lot of concern. Wow. You know? Because I'm trying to think here that if you go to Nigeria church, if, I mean, if you go to Nigeria and visit some churches, I'm afraid you might find the pastors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that is why I say I thank that you are still Ukrainian. You are still Ukrainian. You really know much about all these things that you are showing because it's like you don't know anything at all concerning Nigeria churches. Huh. The way I'm saying it. Huh. Yeah, so there, there, there are a lot you are going to see when you when you visit Nigeria. A lot that I pray that you don't fight anyone because it's, it's, it's going to piss you off. Sure of that. You know, and again, um, now, now let me talk about the first giving prayer worship proper. It, it it goes like this. Hello. Yeah, they hear you. Yeah. If you are having any Thanksgiving, you are somehow obliged to invite friends and well wishers from outside. Waiting, waiting up. Who tell who tell them? Where yeah, is that? It, that, somehow, somehow, because they, they will some so, some churches we will tell you, call invite people, invite people. There's no so you, it's like if you if in most of the video you are showing, you can see that people are feed up. Most of them are not the church members. Okay. The people from outside. Yeah. So you have to, and, uh, and so to, to, to be sincere with you, sir, there is no pastor that will be happy with you, that people come out to come and dance with you without dropping anything in the, in the, in the basket on the bus. So it's all about so, money, about our what? Yeah. So the, so, so the, the issue there, that, that, that is the main brainwashing. The issue there is that when you invite people in there to dance with you, yours is to go out and come and, and we, have been, we have been called upon. So for the Thanksgiving, you have to dance out with all that you invited. Yeah. So as you dance, as you dance out, so you dance you, before you dance back, you drop something at that bus or mm -hmm. the basket, the place outside there. So mm -hmm. where, because I, I have I have been a church where people came out to dance with it with the with the with the celebrant. When they were going back, the pastor had to hold everybody to stop. That no, it's not done. When you come out to, to for a Thanksgiving, you are supposed to drop something at the box. <laughs> in the box. Yeah. So everybody was shocked. So much so everybody has to start choking their hands in their pocket and start dropping something. Just like if you are, you know. So that, that is system. So it's it, 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 it's very sad to see that that is another way of brainwashing and many we seriously we are all in need. We don't even know that it's brainwashing. We your still uh, is this is normal thing, if not of your you are opening our eyes now for now, you know. So, uh, and, 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 and the first Sunday of every month is the worst. Hello? Because you must give, eh? Ah, the first Sunday of every month is the worst. Yeah, there's a lot of thanksgiving. The first, the, you have to thank God for the first Sunday of the month. You have to thank God for, for everything. So many, many people skip that Sundays. That first Sunday of the month, many people skip it because you know that you are, if you are, if you, you, if you come to your church, go to the church with your pocket being loaded with money, you are going back empty. So, so if if you don't if you don't feed your car before coming, maybe your car will drop it off because you no money to feed it to, to put it for in the car. So um, I, all, the, all the same as I said before, I thank God that you are still there, you are still there in Ukraine to 
for you to see a lot and a lot before you go, you go to that country, that country, there is a lot that you will learn when you get there. So just see those Wow. I thank you, sir. Oh, may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So how will Nigeria have electricity and water supply when the money is being used like this? All the money that is supposed to use for industrialization, for growth, for development of the country, infrastructure, everything is being given to some greedy pastors. They have just set up a, a, an industry of taking from people, stealing from people. Yes, please. Hello. Yes. Who is calling? Hello. Yes, we are hearing you talk now. Good evening, DSA. Good evening. Finally got to talk to you. Yes, who is talking, please? This is Bridget, Bridget McCarthy. From? From Sweden. From Sweden. How are you, Bridget? Yes. I'm great, and you? Well, you know, I'm getting the shocks of my life today. Ah, uh, <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. I don't know where to start and how to say thank you. Wow. You, you are really God sent and a blessing. Hmm. I, I have been uh, a mumu, like Nigerians say. <laughs> <laughs> for so long because of my own personal situation and I would go from one church to the other trying to seek solution and you believe so much that God is in these churches hmm. unfortunately I have been to it is God Christ of, embassy it is God, I have been with Christ it is, embassy it is God of mammon okay. it is God of mammon that is in those churches mammon yeah, yes. All the churches I know I have been VIP, uh, uh, Alex Mujuko or Mujuka, whatever, so many of them in England until I decided enough is enough. If this is the way God wants my situation to be, let it be. So since I started watching you, you have changed my mindset. My brother, my father, you have changed me so much that I was even Maybe telling you my younger son. Father, they will say I'm one of them. Or... Sorry? <laughs> I said, do I know the father or... so that they will not say I'm one of them? <laughs> I said to my son, don't put your foot in any church again. Wow. Yes, because when we were going to Christ Embassy, I used to encourage him. I said, my son, this is the place. This is the place. My son will say no. Now he's 22 years. He will say, no, mom, I don't want to go to this church anymore. I said, ah, this boy. I called him two, three days ago, and I said to him, Nathan, I have discovered a man, a true man of God. And he's talking about tithes, he's against tithing, he's against all these things that I have been wasting my money on. And I don't see any progress. Yeah. I don't see any progress. So I will cut it short. I am so happy to have heard you. I have been following you for some time now. And I pray to God that he will fulfill you and, and close you with the wisdom of God to endure and go on with what you are fighting because we all need a voice like your voice. Mm. We need your voice. And I can assure you that your followers on this platform will not leave you alone Amen. by the grace of God. Amen. By the grace of God. And then um, to also say I'm very much interested in your books but I will write to you and, and find out how to go about it. Okay, just write to dssbooks at gmail.com. Okay, God bless you, sir. Thank you, my and sister. And your family. Thank you, congratulations. Wow, 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 wow. See all kind of manipulations going on in the name of God. But the most painful thing about this is that they're using the name of God. And people sincerely believe they're doing it for God. 
They don't know they are doing it for another God, the God of Mammon. They don't know they are doing all these things for another God. The God of Mammon is who is in charge, not Almighty God. God of greed. Hello? 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 Yes, Pastor. Uh, we can't hear you. Yes, are you getting me? Hello? Hello, I'm here. Very faint, very faint. Hello, I'm here. Now Hello? it's good, yeah, now it's better. Hello? Yeah, hello, I'm here. Are you getting me? Yeah, we, we hear you now. Who is talking, please? Uh, this is Plutonic. Oh! From is, Minnesota. Is that your birthday? Is it true that today is your birthday? Uh, yes, today I turned 40. Wow! I turned 40 years old today, Pastor. <laughs> Congratulations! I, I'm grateful to God. I have gained a lot of knowledge in my 45th day since I've been listening to you. Yeah. A lot of changes in my life, my family, and everything you say about people. Thanksgiving, 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 you know I'm from Liberia. Yeah, so so how much should we collect from you for your 40th birthday? That should be a, a special offering. A special Thanksgiving. It will be $40. <laughs> $40. But that for that $40, I'm going, I'm going to buy... I'm going to put, I'm going to give it to the homeless people to help yeah. them with hot meal for Christmas. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> yep. So I'm very, very grateful to everything I have seen. Bring wife when my mother died, they have to go in the record huh. and check and and check her paperwork whether she had been paid or not. If she, if she was owing any money in the church, we have to. Oh yes, my God. When she she was owing, we have to pay. It zero balance before her body was accepted i don't know when you pay that money they go into heaven right away or we pay for heaven now or paying for what wow i don't know i don't know so it is really really heartbreaking i'm from liberia that's why i always like to call my country i love the way you call your country but yes. we know our country better yeah and in, yeah and in africa when somebody owing money this time they will they will give statement they will call your knee up how much you owe you if you don't pay that money <laughs> this is in so the church. This is in the yep. church. Yes, in the church. In the church. Wow. In the church, they're going to they're going to call the month the, the month of December. All everybody that owe for the month of December. If I put to, I'm owe. If if I'm owing fifty dollars, we will call it fifty dollars you owe, or we will put it in the bulletin. Everybody will read it. Ooh. So it's something serious. Just like oh, there's grace right now because of money, money, money. Money, so it's so hard. It's a, it's a shame. It's, so hard. it's a shame. Yeah, it, is, it's a shame. it is so heartbreaking. You have liberated so many souls. You have set so many people free. My wife is happy. My children happy. And we are just grateful for what you've been doing. You have a whole lot, a whole lot. I'm just very platform. Thank you very much for the birthday wishes you guys sent me. I saw it. Yes, you found it. Yeah. Thanks to everybody and also to your wife. I don't know where you get your energy from. <laughs> you you've been preaching seven days a week for how many months you've been doing this business you never get tired every day your message is so different your message is so great it's just liberating people i don't know if if if, if pastor in africa preach seven days a week like this oh my god he will make millions of dollars on all, <laughs> all of the poor people and 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 and, and and our people don't want to accept the reality. They don't want to accept the truth. Mm -hmm. That why you say it's true. They know deep down in the heart is true, but we African, we just hard to be convinced. Even if Jesus come right now, we say, Jesus, you're not a true Jesus. You're supposed to be white. Why are you coming black? Or why are you coming gray? Oh, so we just hard to be convinced. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you to your family for letting you to do this. Thank you to the God for giving you such an energy. Oh, for setting us free. I'm so grateful for my birthday. I'm so happy that I've gained knowledge at the age of 40 right now. And I feel, I feel now, I feel now like I'm, like I'm a teenager once more that I can, that I can, it, it, it is, 
not too late yet to study. It is right. not too late yet to save my money. It is not too late yet to help somebody. Yes. It is not too late yet to move forward. It is not too late yet to speak the truth because only the truth can set us free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Bye. Congratulations. Happy birthday. This dancing, eh? I think it's dancing is one of their brainwashing technique. Oh. Why are they dancing? After all these dance, Nigeria should have been the most prosperous. So. With all this kind of dance, Nigeria is supposed to have been the richest country in the world. Nigerians would have been the richest people in the world. Oh. And the, the, the people say, when you do the same thing over and over again and nothing is changed and you are still doing it, that is madness. Yes, Hello? Please. Hello, Pastor Sunday. Yes, please. Who is calling, please? This is Bamidele from the U.S. Yes, my brother. Gary, you're coming How you doing today? Well, well, I'm getting the shock of my life today. Uh, look, if you're not sure, Pastor Sunday, I will doubt everything you're doing. <laughs> yeah. I am telling you, and to be honest with you, God has raised you up for such a time as this. Do you know about and, these things? You know, I am very aware of it. I've been a victim too, Pastor Sunday. Wow. I am way, I'm very, very aware of this. Very aware of this. And you know, the, the funny thing is that God has been preparing you for the past 30-something years yes. for this mission. Yes. And I'm telling you, and, I will, and, I will, and, I will, and I'll, I'll be mentioning a lot of names okay. in a few minutes that I have. Good. You see, I was, I was listening to a man of God. He, he preached, he, he, he preached, he, pre, he, he was ministering uh, like two years ago. His name is uh, Prophet Akimbi Imak. And while he was preaching, he said the, that God told him that pastors that are feasting and they are, and they are getting fat, in the mystery of his people, that God will begin to expose them. And not only expose them, God said he will bankrupt their empire. Wow. That God said he will bankrupt their empire. He said this, this is two years ago. Where is he based? Where is, is he based in Nigeria? He's based in Nigeria. I can be him, Mark. He's the, he's the, he's the, he's the founder of uh, Christ, Christ Power Evangelical Ministry, CPEN, wow. in Ibadan. Wow. Oh wow, that it must be in the spirit of he said God said God told him that he will bankrupt. You see, this man in their service, sometimes when they want to collect offering, he will say, Oh no, don't bother about offering. If you if 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 you if we if if we if if we are to take offering, if we are to base everything on offering, all these pastors will take all your money. This man is yes. is it must be a man it, of God. Those are one of the remnants, yes. the remnants in the in the I, church. I, so I am not surprised when all these things are happening. I have the audio of this preaching. So I have it. So I just recently listened to it and I was like, oh my God, this is what God has been planning for the past two years. And God has been trying to warn all these pastors, but they won't listen. When I was in Maryland, when I was living in Maryland, I schooled in Maryland. I used to go to this church. It's an RCCG. And the, it's, it was a young pastor. He's a very young pastor, very young minister. Uh, Pastor Emmanuel Iwa. So, and everybody in the church, we are all students. Everybody. A wonderful man of God. This man, he doesn't bother you about going and bringing tithes and offering. In fact, majority of us, because we are all students, we don't have money. Majority of us, we go to church because we know by the time we get to church on our way back, we will get tomatoes, we will get, we will get bell pepper, onions, we will get rice. So, and this man, he was trying to do a lot of things differently in RCCG North America. And because of that, they, they rise up against him. Oh. They, they were trying to frustrate him. And they pushed him to the point that this man had to say, you know what, this is, this is it. I can't serve under you anymore. God called me, and I answered God's call. But you know what, the fact that I'm under you, I won't let you drive me to hell. Yes. This man had to leave RCCG. These are the, these are the remnants. Even, you could tell these are that people that, who know God. These are people who know you, God. They have personal relationship even, with God. And they will not compromise even, with ungodliness. No. No. In fact, he said it. He said, look, I would rather die than compromise on the things of heaven. Yes. 
And, and, and you know the funniest thing? There was this one of these other big men in RCCG North America. His name is Pastor Tola. This man had to be cursing this man that he would dry up. Wow. And you know, one day, one day I was I was I in hope, his office. I, and hope, nothing, I, was I hope nothing happened to the guy. Oh, oh no, no, thank God. I mean, he's a prayerful man. Okay. He is if, if there is one thing he does, he prays a lot. Thank God for that spirit of prayer in him. One day he was showing me one of the letters that they were sending to pastors. And they were not even addressing them as pastors. They were addressing them as customers. <laughs> this is something that I saw. So it wasn't that nobody told me. They were addressing to pastors in RCCG, North America, as, as customers, not pastors, not ministers. Wow. So I think, I think God is pushing this revolution because we need, uh, we need, we've come to a point in the church especially in African churches, that God really needs to bring back the revival, the fire that, that started this thing back in the 1930s. You see, and, and it's, it's very sad because a lot of them, they don't understand. In 1930s? What happened in 1930s? During the time of uh, Apostle Barbara, when the old Pentecostal movement started oh, in, okay. in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Because all of them, they are saying they are, they are, they are, they are Pastor Ayodele Barbara son. But they had no nothing in common with this man. Yeah. They, they had nothing in common with this man. And, and it's very unfortunate because a lot of them, they are just following the same pattern. And when they now find out that they are wrong, they are not trying to admit that, oh, sorry, I know. Now I see the truth. I'm wrong. And now they are still trying to, trying to say something over their own wrongness. I, I don't know even how to define it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unfortunate, but I just, I, 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 one, one thing I just want us to, to, to I want you to help us because now a lot of people have found the truth and some of us, some people are still going to the church because now they've seen that they've been living a lie and now they don't want to do that anymore. And some of us that were still going, we're only going just to show face, really. Our <laughs> hearts are not there anymore, but we, we need a solution to the current situation in the in in the movement in this movement we need a solution because you know people just not going to church not going to worship god you know i know church is not anything it's just with people but the bible says we shouldn't for, you know forsake the gathering of the brethren you know i, I think there should be a a, a coalition a, a, a people coming together even i mean people who have known the truth now you know we need something we need like a uh, like like an organization to bring people who have now known the truth together so that at least we can continue to rub minds together and be praying together because we can't just be going and be saying that okay you know what people shouldn't go to the or people or people saying they are no more going to church it breaks my heart you know it, it really breaks my but heart what do you call what say, do you call church church why you know, what, what do you call church you are calling church building or where people gather inside building why should you think that yes. is church Church it's, is it's, where yeah. two or three are gathered in my name. Gathered together. So, right. yeah. So why should you think it has to be a big building with some formula, no. with music, no. with a group, no. with a pastor? So that is not the church. As long as people are gathering together in the name of the Lord, two or three, and they are worshiping him, studying his, his word, like in the, 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 exactly. in the New Testament, they never had mm. the big buildings. It was only small, small meetings, house meetings. Mm. The Bible yes, talks yes. about house meetings, the church in your right. house, the church in the house, right. the church in Roman right. house, the church in Caesar's house, right. church in house mm. meetings. That Those are the kind of churches we had in the New Testament. That's right. That's right. You know, I, I, I really thank God for this movement that God is using you. And uh, honestly, God has planned you you know, to take you out of Nigeria, because if you had been in Nigeria and you didn't go outside of Nigeria, honestly, all these things will be new and you probably even won't see anything, you know, in a flood in everything that's going on. So honestly, Pastor Sunday, God has been planning everything. Yes. You know, since the day you gave your life to Jesus. Yes. 30 something years ago. Yes. And I'm telling you, it is not a coincidence. It is not by mistake. This is just the work of God. And I'm so glad that you answer his call. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor. Okay, I just want to, Pastor, I just want to share my little experience, uh, what happened in, uh, in my church uh, last month. Yeah. I attended Christ Embassy. 
So when the service was going on and um, our pastor called uh, people for healing, for prayers. Yes. So I was one of the people who came out okay. during the service. Okay. So both the choir and some other people came out. Yeah. And he was, he was praying for everybody. So I can say most of the people fell down. Okay. So when he comes to when he when he reached my turn, you know one fall. Pastor asked me. You know what? Asked me. You, sorry. You know one grief fall. Yes. So pastor asked me, uh, "What's my problem?" I told pastor. I told pastor that I'm having a. I'm having a bad pain, and pastor prayed for me seriously. And uh, after prayers, and uh, he asked me, "Is the pain gone?" I said, "Pastor, no." He said, "Okay, let me try again and pray for you again." And he prayed for me again. Uh, nothing happened, and do you know what Pastor told me? No. Pastor said to me, "I have to build up my faith." <laughs> and now you don't get faith now. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't fall. The other people was falling, but oh. the ushers, only me who did not fall. So I, I, should, I should build my faith. So I was wondering how I can build my faith. And if I don't have faith, I, I, I don't think I will be able to go to church. So now, you know, I could have used my time to do other things. Now, for the design. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a kind of uh, things we see in the church these days, you know. So if you don't so, fall, so, you, you, that, that you, so it's all now by falling. Yeah, for example, I, I didn't mean I fall, you know, then the prayer has been answered. <laughs> Nonsense. Nonsense. So, so, you know, what is happening in the church now is... Uh, it's something that we don't know what to do, you know, because how the church is, how our African pastors are, you know, the way they are doing in the church now, what they do, what they preach, uh, pastor. In fact, we it's time for us to be asking questions, you know. But you yourself but, self, what Christ embassy, your mumu don't do for now. He <laughs> said, what would they do? Actually, uh, I attend Christ Embassy. It's not because of um, it's not because of pastor or for any other person, but because just they, a they personal the, relationship they, with is, God. That is the number one brainwashing church for Africa. He <laughs> said, "Pastor, I'm going to church, but I use my own brain also to follow to follow them. I'm just praying my God. I don't <laughs> I don't go because of the pastor himself or for any other person, you know." So, so, so yes, I really appreciate you. I thank you so much yeah. for the good work you are doing. Also, uh, there's a one point uh, I want to make, um, DSA. Okay. And also, uh, listeners, please, if you people could uh, make it short so that other people can also share their views. Because yes. Uh, yes. Since, one week, since one week, I'm trying to call, but because there was no... Time. So yes, yes. I'm lucky. I'm lucky to speak today. So if they can make it like ten minutes, that would be lovely. Three minutes. Not be uh, Okay, three minutes. Uh, Not be Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, so thank much. you, Pastor. Um, may God bless you. A wonderful Christmas, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Meanwhile, I want to also talk about the books. I have my books here. And uh, they are helpful. I'm not just because they are my books, but I, because I know what is in these books and how they can help you. You could go, if you want to be a distributor of these books, please be free to write to dsbooks at gmail.com. The it, one is called Poverty Mindset versus Abundance Mindset. How to Regain Your Lost Years. Stop Working for Uncle Sam. Kingdom Driven Life. Church Shift. Why People Die Early and Tragic Death. No, how to overcome the fear of death, Monoc the danger of monoculturalism, discover your source of energy, right, dignity of labor, let heroes arise, who am I, 
raising the next generation of Steve Jobs and Bill, Bill Gates. What to do with your time? No one is better than you. Creative and innovative power. Create your own net worth. How to build a secure future. How to become great. Hello, TSC. Yes, who is calling from where, please? It's ID, calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, oh, ID, how are you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Long time. <laughs> yes, but nice always to hear your contribution. It's always <laughs> wonderful to hear from you. From you. <laughs> yeah, um, there the, the was a guy that called me so well. He was an ignorant guy. I laughed so hard. He was talking about what? To, your, your voice needs to be louder a little bit. Yeah. You know, the, the guy that was just talking, um, I don't know, he didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> I laugh so hard because you see, those are the kind of people you meet in Nigeria. Some of them are even in high offices, and I'm trying to talk to them these days, and they just react the same way. <laughs> I laugh so hard. Very sad. Very but, sad. But I just wanted very, very sad. Very, very sad. You know. And then high offices, like what is the commission I was talking to? Just the same thing. Wow. I uh, just, uh, just uh, almost worked. You know. But um, uh, most importantly. Um, I just want to thank you for, uh, for you know, one of the things you've done, the greatest thing in my perspective that you've done is you've, uh, you've given voice to those people that nobody hears from. You've, you've opened a door for people that nobody gave them opportunity to talk and but yet they had uh, pain in their, in their hearts, in their, in their heart. So you've opened the door for the common people. You've not judged anybody, whether their vocabulary is complete or not. You've mm -hmm. met everybody at the point of their need by opening up this platform. Yeah. And I think to me that is the greatest thing that you've done. It shows the depth of uh, the depth of your heart. And I just want to tell you, man, I love you, man. I Thank tell you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, man. You know, yeah. You've given the uh, the common man a voice uh, to mm. speak, and that is. That's the greatest thing. That's the greatest thing ever. I believe heaven is um, heaven is happy, very, very happy. Yeah, because I even heard yeah. that in most of these churches, you cannot even ask questions. No, you cannot. You know, cannot ask questions. You can't even talk to the pastor. Who are you to even talk, you know? And besides, our culture has not helped. Because like you thought, our culture is yes, sir, yes, sir. It brings the value of the human being, of the person. Yeah. You know, and then... Um, one of the things that has opened up our eyes to see uh, the extent and the depth of destruction that our culture has caused to the, uh, to the person is when you come to the West and you see how people look you in the face, ask a question. Some of us can sometimes, you know, when we first started, you cannot, even with your education, you cannot even ask for your right. You don't have the confidence. And it's not because you don't want to, but the culture makes you not to have a right and a voice. And wow. it becomes part of the church. The church. You know, and, um, you know, the, the other time I wanted to call you, but it was late, when you were talking about um, churches that would, let me start from there, just a few things, please. Churches that would um, tell you that you cannot have your own vision. Yeah. You know, that is very, very common. You can't even have a vision. I mean, if you notice, even all these churches, I keep asking, is it only the GOs that can speak English that should be on TV? What about those branches? Why can't they have their pastor on TV? They never have that. Yeah. I mean, even even here in Atlanta, when you go to the, like African stores and all those places, they are advertising. You never see the local pastor. You never ever. You wow. only see one person. Wow. You know, you see either you see the Chris picture, you see the uh, the other two guys, uh, Embassy and uh, the other one, RG, the Redeem. It's only that picture you see. No matter how many of those churches they have here in Atlanta. Wow. So I used to wonder. I mean, the pastor can they speak English? Can they pay for their television program? <laughs> that is only the CEO that you have to see all over the world. Uh, is it the points that they are selling? You know, so that means if you put your picture, you would then be. I guess they will say you have a different vision. So it means you know, that it's a personal empire, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a personal. And I think it's a policy that you cannot put your face. Uh, you cannot put your face out there. It must be the CEO, no matter where he is in Nigeria. So even here, that but that's only him. The church, everything they talk about is just the G, you know. So that's, that, that happens. So you really cannot develop your vision. They say you have a dive vision. Matter of fact, that happened to me here in Atlanta. I was in a church. 
Uh, my wife and I were trying to pastor in the church for some other people that said they were going to retire, they were tired. So I used to do a TV program here in Atlanta. And then when people call in, they're calling to ask for me. Rather than the, uh, the lady that was the presenter, after a while, one day she changed the recording time. She didn't even let me know. Wow. And then, yeah, because she was worried. People were calling in for me. My perspective was, was different. She changed the recording time. Didn't even let me know. I got to the studio. They still go there, change the time. My God. That was her telling me, you have, and then she said, I have my own vision. I don't have, I don't have the, uh, is it, how did she put it? She said, I don't have the heart of the visionaire. <laughs> that I have my own vision, that I'm arrogant, you know? I started to say, I mean, I'm arrogant. I don't know, when you're confident in what you know, you become arrogant. Wow. So that is very, very common. You cannot have your own vision. It's established. And, um, and this concept of thanksgiving, that you that you're sharing today yes sir. these things have been so designed that you know some of these things have been designed like if you really look at it carefully it all goes back to what you thought a few weeks ago it goes back to syncretism yes sir. everything that is the root of everything so everybody subliminally flow into it without asking question huh. you know huh. so they sometimes they do i see those thanksgiving you know they'll do it all uh, cultural thanksgiving, everybody would dress according to their culture. Different, different kind of schemes, and um, and every day they have things, activity in church and all that. <laughs> but why is this all connected with money? I don't understand. Uh, no, it's money, it's just money. You know, it's just, you know, at the end of, you know, the people like you, you're showing the people that are in the church don't think. But the people that are leading, they know what they are doing, you know. But so I would not think that, you know, so they try to create a fun fair an activity, you know, get you to like it, you dress up, you feel important, but at the end of the day, they're really, really targeting, uh, targeting the money. Because <laughs> those things don't happen, yeah, those things don't happen at all in American churches. You see? It doesn't happen at all. Matter of fact, one, one of my friends that I was trying to get to come to church one time, I remember he said, look, man, I go to a church here in Atlanta, an American church, said they don't even ask you for money or time. They say, if you have, you give. If you don't have, it's just at the door. Just drop it when you're going out. They never, I've never been to those churches. That is the normal thing. That is money. in every country, in every culture. Apart from cultures where Nigerian churches are or African churches. Yes. Only that is the place see those things. Yeah, I've never been to any American church where they pressure you for money. <laughs> I've never <laughs> think about it. They've never, sometimes they don't even ask. It just gets to that time. They just say, they don't even push you, you know. But, you know, most black churches, you know, black churches do. And I think, too, like, the syncretism, To I think one thing, too, like, black churches in America, if you look carefully, you would see that their own syncretism is born out of slavery, you know? Yeah. They, they, they're still, those cultures still affect them, and uh, it still affect the theology and their, their understanding of it. You know, so everything is still backed up by some culture that has become normal to the community. So when it happens, they don't really think about it uh, twice. So I think everything in our church is about money. But like you said, you know, what has free a lot of us now, even me, I'm telling you, even me as a pastor now, I'm telling you, you've confused me, I'm telling you. Man. You, just, uh, you, just, you just messed me up totally. Let me sit straight like an American. Wow. <laughs> you just messed me up totally because nobody stops to think and say, what is going on? This thing is not producing the desired result. Yeah. We've been doing this day in, year out for years. Where are we really going with this? So they just flow and they just keep going. So I really want to thank you. That's why and, uh, I always everybody. encourage. I always encourage anybody on my on the platform to go through all those series one by one. I have a series on church. People don't even know I have a series on the church. How church is supposed to be done. Everything is on YouTube there. I have a series on the kingdom. How, that is also about how church should be done. It's on this, it's on this, on this something there. Yeah, matter of fact, uh, the kingdom, the kingdom perspective really set everybody, anybody that listens to the kingdom perspective and think about it, they will just be free. As a matter of fact, that would just mess them up totally. They will just be free. The mindset, the definitions and everything. And they will just, and uh, everybody have this truth in their spirit. So you have a way of bringing it to the surface, and then they cannot argue because they say, man, it's been there all the while. Yeah. And uh, it's really appreciated when we think about it. So thank you. You put the right vocabulary. 
you've given everybody a lot of people direction. Uh, it's like a breath of fresh air just to. Well, I'm the I'm the anti I'm the Antichrist now. <laughs> <laughs> But I, think, uh, but I think in my perspective, you know, people will say, oh, God is saying this. I don't say, oh, that God told me. That's what, see, what I'm seeing right now, what I'm seeing right now, this is going to lead the revolution to the next, uh, you know, people are waiting for the next uh, Azusa Street Conference, the next yeah. revival. Yeah. I don't know why they try to make all those things so spiritual. But you see, the, the next revival is going to be a wave of knowledge. Mm. That would feel cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, and Amen. Uh, Amen. it will help us. Hopefully, maybe I don't know how long God is going to take to do this 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 years, but then maybe from here it will fulfill the prophecy where the last shall become the first. Amen. So I really Amen. Do thank you Amen. so much. God bless you. Thank, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bless it.